traveling to consciousness, exploring spiritual journeys to find answers in uncertainty. And we are live. Mystique, thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited to talk with you. Of course. Thank you for having me. Likewise. So you're killing it. You're killing it on TikTok. Huh? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate what, that. Almost forget what you're up to now, like over a million followers. How did that? Yeah. 1.4. Beautiful. And just talking about Reiki and, you know, mystical aura cleansing type stuff. Yeah. Energy healing, energy healing. And I think having people be able to feel the difference of um, like a regular ASMR tingle to like, oh, this is actually healing me. This is actually helping me. I feel like really got that TikTok super popular. Mm. And maybe we should dive into ASMR a little bit because I don't mm -hmm. think we've talked about it on the podcast before. My, under, I've kind of seen like the TikTok lives where people are like rubbing the microphone or maybe making these weird noises. So mm -hmm. what what it is ASMR and like kind of what's going on with us at a mental or energetic level. Yeah. So there's different kinds of ASMR. A lot of people are familiar with the auditory kind of stimulus and I do auditory, but also visual. And I feel like visual is not as much like talked about or done um, in that space. But basically that ASMR experience um, really it it has this like trigger to the brain and to your senses and it allows you to feel various different things and some people find it really like gross and shocking and they don't like it they don't like that visceral reaction that they get and some people find it so relaxing they can fall asleep some people just like to hear it in the background so they can do their work so um it comes in many different facets but the one that i specialize in is mostly that visual part because i do add the music in the background so sometimes you don't get to hear the clicking of the nails or the scraping of whatever i'm doing but you do get the visual effect of, oh, I'm healing you at the same time that there is some sort of like musical trigger. And that really affects people a lot in the community that I'm in. Very cool. Yeah. Cause like you're saying, like you can just kind of like people usually like rub their microphone or yep. put like static over it. So what is the visual stuff? I guess I must have missed that. What is the visual stuff that you're doing? So basically, a lot of it's going to be like the plucking. So you're going to see plucking a lot in the ASMR community. And usually how like um, regular ASMR artists who are not in an energy healing field, they'll just be like pluck, 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 and they'll take little things, they'll take tweezers and they'll and they'll pluck. I don't necessarily say that or whisper it or anything. It's more of I'm on the beat with it. So if we're listening to like a Doja Cat song or we're listening to some sort of meditation music, right when that beat hits, I'm doing some sort of motion. And that synchronization is very rhythmic for people and they like that, especially in like the OCD community or the neurodivergent community. They love it because it's some sort of like scratching an itch of their brain. <laughs> that they can't really get to anywhere else. I'm certainly somewhere on the spectrum of both those communities. So mm -hmm. you're talking, you're talking to your people right now. <laughs> uh, so okay, so this plucking, maybe I have seen it. You kind mm -hmm. of like just for the people listening, you kind of just put your hand up to the camera and then just like kind of do like a like an octopus motion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, octopus motion. That's definitely a new way of hearing it, which is really fun. I might have to coin that. Um, but it's it's really for the regular ASMR artists who are not in the energy healing field. They are just kind of plucking and plucking and plucking and just doing that movement. I kind of have the added benefit because of my attunements to Reiki that I'm actually doing something to your energy while that's happening. It's not just a trigger response in your brain. It's something that I am kind of locating any sort of energies that are stagnant, that um, are blockages to you, that are impacting you negatively, and I'm removing them. And in that process with Reiki, it naturally already transmutes that energy into divine healing energy. So I feel mm. like that's just another reason why those videos have blown up because it's not just, a, oh, this is for entertainment. It's entertainment and you're actually getting physical health benefits from it. So super impactful. That's crazy. And I definitely want to get to Reiki at some point because I don't yeah. think we've touched on that quite yet on the podcast. Mm -hmm. But kind of shifting it back, maybe, and, you know, I guess, what do they say? Comparison is the root of all evil. But yeah. <laughs> in this comparison space, right, you have brought up that some people are doing it a little bit differently. And mm -hmm. is there a way that people are able to tell whenever seeing these videos? I mean, there's a whole bunch of questions actually within this, but the first one would be whether or not they're 
let's say, doing something that's energetically beneficial for them. Right. So to kind of answer that question, there's like it was like a two part sort of with people who are not attuned to Reiki energy or who are not actually doing energy healing, you don't realize those benefits between the two unless you're super sensitive because Reiki healing is a super subtle energy. And if you're um, really acclimated to tuning into that energy, it's going to be very easy for you to identify that person's an energy healer and that person's like a regular ASMR artist. Um, But for the people who are doing ASMR and they're not necessarily an energy healer and they're saying like, oh, I'm doing this to your energy, that's where it gets a little bit like... Like, don't necessarily say that's what you're doing. If it's just ASMR, if it's just plucking, then say that. But um, if you're not necessarily in a space where you can call yourself an energy healer because of the experiences that you have or because of the education that you've had or because of, you know, something that would qualify you to do that, you may be kind of, you know, not adding to the benefit of somebody. Because if you're not in a space where you're constantly clearing your own energy, clearing your own channel, whatever you got going on in your aura, and you're over here with your messy, dirty hands, (laughs) getting into somebody else's energetically, um, you could be impacting them negatively without even really knowing it. And there have been times where even if someone is a qualified healer, you can go to them and if they're having an off day or if they're just not the right vibe for you, you can kind of come out of that session like, I don't feel good. And I was supposed to get in there to feel good after and I don't. And sometimes it's a vibrational thing and sometimes it's a maybe that person actually wasn't who they said that they were. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. I could get into some wild aspects. And how would you be able, because where my mind's going with this is that there are times that I feel uncomfortable or I kind of feel, let's say bad, but I know that it's this catalyst to something bigger and something greater. Is there a level of discernment or a little bit of a feeling that you can tell that, okay, it removed a block of mine, but there's still like this little hurdle I need to get over versus somebody's just giving you negative energetic baggage? Yeah. So you're asking kind of like how to identify the two? Yeah. Is, would there be like a slight different feeling in those two energies? Absolutely. So first thing I'd like to say is that whenever you're getting any sort of energetic work done, it's always a process. There's no one and done anything. There's no one and done pill. There's no one and done Reiki session. It's a process. But what I kind of like to say is when you're in a session and you're fully allowing yourself to release and you're giving that person permission to help heal you, they can get to like 75% of the root of that issue, but they can never get to the 100 because that's your responsibility. You were supposed to provide that 25% of, okay, now that I am healed or, you know, allow yourself to relax as much as you possibly can, which obviously that energy healer has to be able to do for you too. But afterwards, maintaining that, you know, it's kind of just like, I'm going to be so healthy one day and like eat so well one day. And then I'm going like, you know, in this fitness journey and the next day you're doing something that completely counteracts that, you know, so you could have a great um, training session with someone to exercise or to have a nutritional coach. But if you're just junking it up the next day or the next couple of days, you're not doing yourself that service. So Part of that, you kind of have to just realize that the energy healer is going to be there for you for a really big amount of it. You have to take care of that like rest of the percentage that we can't get to because it's up to you to release it. And then kind of to have that discernment for like the next part of the question is when someone, you know, is maybe saying, oh, I can energy heal you, but they're not necessarily a healer. Or if someone's online and they're saying, oh, I'm healing your energy, how to have that discernment, um, usually The first thing to just already know is that pretty much 100% of energy healing is like consent-based. So especially when it comes to Reiki, that acts on free will. So if you're not giving that consent to be healed in that moment, you will not have any sort of effect on you, which is super important to Mm. know if someone doesn't know that already. Um, So if you see and you're scrolling and you're like, oh, someone's had energy healing me and you don't know them, you don't have that rapport that like know the trust, you can just say, oh, I don't consent. And you can do that either out loud, you can do that energetically, just "Mm, that's not for me. Um, Me being a Reiki practitioner, we have certain symbols that we use. And I just, if I see a healer, I just put a protection symbol right there, like "Mm, blocking this until I really know you. And then I'll go onto their profile. I'm like, okay, what are your qualifications? Mm -hmm. Do you offer this as a service? And I try to get into their world a little bit more to see if they are legit. Um, A lot of people don't want to do that extra stuff. But if you are looking to actually get healed, it's important that you do. 
it's fascinating you say this because recently I was talking to somebody, it's probably on this podcast, where I was talking about how like when you scroll and you're just kind of getting inundated with messages, honestly, just message after message after message. And there's a piece of you, there's a piece of you that needs to almost be like the judge and Jerry of the information that you're receiving. And it's fascinating to hear you say this, how it even, I mean, even probably more so translates to this at his energy work, because if you're just scrolling and you see someone that just starts doing plucking, you know, there's this, it seems weird to me, right? Like, it seems like the, the practitioner might want to say like, okay, I'm about to do this, you know, say yes or no, or just like flick to the next thing before I start. This episode of Traveling to Consciousness is brought to you by the official Traveling to Consciousness app, available on the iOS and Google Play Store. On this app, you're going to get exclusive content from articles to meditations to anything else that Clayton is going to put out. Here is the also where you're going to find the only place to find the ad-free versions of the podcast. You're also going to be able to get the podcast at earlier dates than normal, the free release version of it. So the Traveling to Consciousness podcast app, I highly suggest that you download it because it's the only way that I suggest that you listen to it. And what's even better is that the company is always making updates. So please let me know if you personally have a recommendation and we can get that in there. So remember, download the Traveling to Consciousness app so that you can get early releases, you can get the video format, you can get it ad free and so much more. I mean, with that being said, I've definitely had my fair share as I've grown in the business. There are some people who do a whole, oh, claim to receive or consent to receive. And I prefer mm. the consent to receive because you can't necessarily claim an energy and just say, oh, this is mine now. It, like You have to <laughs> vibrationally align to it. Um, and you can do so by consenting to that energy healer. Um, but some people, th they don't have that. And that's totally fine. And a lot of my videos don't have that. Um, and to be honest, personally for me, I'm not sure what everyone else, you know, their ethic code behind it is or the reason behind it is. But for me, you know, in the spiritual space, in the spiritual community, sometimes it's hard to bust through to other people who are not necessarily spiritualists and who may be like beginners or maybe they have no idea what energy healing is. Um, and in order to get through to those people, sometimes the whole consent to receive right away or, oh, this is energy healing you right away, they won't, you know, resonate with that. What is that? And then they'll just completely miss it. So my mission is to heal the world one soul at a time. And I want to be able to get to those people who never even heard about energy healing to begin with. So if they're just watching my video because they like a Cardi B song or they like, you know, whatever <laughs> song I have and that gets them and then they feel something because we all have this higher self. So even if you don't know what energy healing is and you're like, well, if I don't know it, how can I consent? Your higher self knows. So your higher self will allow you that, that energy or not. Um, but if you're going through that and you're, you're seeing this song and you really like it and then you're like, oh, my God, I, I feel better. or Oh, my gosh, I have less cramps. or Oh, my God, my headache went away. And I watched that. And then you're like, OK, what did this person do to me? And it adds that curiosity. So it's kind of like a engaging thing where it's like a bit of a hook. Um, but right away, if you kind of come out with the consent to receive this, that and the other, sometimes the TikTok algorithm or whatever social media platform won't even push you out because um, it's just a weird algorithm thing. But the last thing I'd like to say is that if you are seriously doing this as an energy healer, still put it somewhere on your page. My consent to receive video has been pinned on the top of my TikTok for a couple years already so that even if people are like, oh, you didn't say like consent, whatever, <laughs> it's not on here anywhere. I can't find it. The second you go to my profile, there it is. It's very important to me that you know that. So I love that's that. why I have it there. I mean, and it, it it's so fascinating to me because I, I think that there's still this level of empowering that individual to understand that you're always getting these messages. I even see it internal talk whenever I have a certain thought or a certain belief, like where's my next, you know, paycheck going to come from or something. It's like, you have the option to identify with that thought or to what I say is like cancel or reject so that it just doesn't create that kind of windfall. Mm -hmm. And I can see that even kind of like with what you're doing. And I mean, even more so if you're just scrolling or just random people, because I even see random people come up to you all the time and they're like, will start projecting their beliefs onto something that you could be doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the time, and I assume a major good majority, maybe not this community that we're talking to right now, will just kind of go with it and kind of test out this idea that doesn't even fully resonate with them in the first place. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it, it really depends. In this kind of field, it's like that's what you said. If it resonates, it resonates. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And if it piques your curiosity for you to go into a little bit more, it may resonate more than you actually think. But um, to be able to listen to that little voice in the head, not everybody can do that. Not everybody knows that there is a little voice inside of their head that's, you know, kind of leading them one way or leading them another. That's their own internal navigational system. But that's exactly what I, why I do what I do. That's exactly why a lot of energy healers do what they do so that you can tune into the subtle energies, not only of Reiki, but of your higher self, of that internal navigational system. And it's a very crucial part of understanding oneself and then beginning the healing journey and having awareness in general. For sure. And going back real quick, because I'm interested mm -hmm. in this as a morality question with yeah. regards to you know, the consent and coming across new people, right? Because, I mean, in this day and age, attention is kind of the new gold currency. And not to mention, I mean, even the work you're doing is healing people energetically. It's it's beautiful at the fundamental level. And I can even just, whether it's your vibe or what you're saying, I can tell that you're authentic about it. So whenever it comes to you putting out the videos, right, I assume that there's this this almost, and maybe it's not conflicting. Maybe I'm creating a problem out of nothing, <laughs> uh, but these conflicting conversation of, yes, I want to reach new people and have them exposed to it. But then there's that line, of course, right? Like with the consent of, okay, like I kind of want to just like give this to people and it'll find the right people it needs to find or versus, uh, I don't know what it's versus feels like there's like a little dance here almost in the morality realm. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you kind of understand where I'm going with the angle Yeah, of kind of like the way that I break it down, if I'm answering your question correctly, is there's definitely a difference between every single video that at least I put out. One of them is going to be entertainment, which may be very quick ones, seven seconds, where at the end of the day, it may not even impact you that much. I mean, a seven second Reiki session may not impact you so much to where you're like, oh my gosh, I wish that, you know, I knew that I was being energy healed. Some people still get, you know, a little bit um, fussed up about it. But then, of course, go to that video and I'll tell you where it's pinned at. But then there's also ones that are a little bit deeper where I know that I'm intentionally healing a specific aspect of someone's energy or aura. And I want to be able to get to those specific people. And are mm. those videos going to get the most views? Probably not. But that doesn't matter. I'm trying to get to a specific um, individual. And a lot of those videos, I will have the whole consent like go here, or, you know, not necessarily claim this, but, you know, comment if this really made you feel something, comment if this really helped you so that they know, at least I'm doing my part, maybe they don't know right off the bat, but the longer videos that I have, the more intense healing ones that I have, I do have a little bit of a, hey, this is a, this is the energy healing that we're doing because I know that that's going to impact them more than like the maybe five second, seven second, nine second video that is mostly for entertainment, but to introduce people to a new way of um, healing in a modern space. And I think what you're kind of alluding to is I, I think I saw some videos like, you know, healing from a breakup or healing to, you know, bl clear blockages of money. Yeah. How does that, does that kind of just like in your viewpoint, I assume you're just shifting the intention a little bit, but then yeah. how do you actually actively go about clearing, let's say, certain blocks that are related to money or relationships? Is it just a, what's the words I'm looking for here? Is it kind of just in that intention and then you just kind of do what you feel intuitively or are you kind of seeing or feeling into different energetic vibrations? So that's interesting because I feel like when I did... um live streams in the beginning of my career, it was very much like I was trying to like feel everyone's energy. And, I've, and a lot of the times in the live streams, I still can feel everyone's energy. Um, but as an energy healer, I had to not take in as many people at a time. If I need to be able to help you, there's some sort of reservoir of like energetic space that I need to hold for myself. So not everyone's coming here, but I can project out. So there, there's that one side of it. But then the other side of it is like, the into the the intention is a part of it and then there's also specific reiki symbols that are sacred um 
to your Reiki attunement. I'm a Reiki master. There's Reiki one, there's Reiki two, and then there's master. And those symbols that you can put on your hands or put on, you know, the front of the camera, that really allows that intention to have more power. And so if I'm releasing a blockage, maybe I'll use a certain symbol there. If I am um, helping you emotionally and mentally, there's another one for that. If I want to empower something more, there's one for that. So it's intention, but it is definitely also the use of those symbols that I feel help me heal the best that I can at a distance. Mm. And maybe this is a good transition then into what Reiki is, right? Mm-hmm. I I personally have a pretty high attunement, let's say, to clairvoyant nature and mm-hmm. a, quite a few other clair abilities. And you know, there's like visualizations, I guess I've done where people have been like, oh, you know, if you want to charge your food, let's say you kind of put your hands around it, you can visualize, you know, energy coming out of your body, aligning with the food coming from above. So what, like, is that Reiki or how do you even, um, I'm trying to think of how to articulate this because Mm -hmm. the other thing that's coming into my mind is something you said earlier where you were, where you said, you know, whether you are, whether it is based on your training or experiences to be an energy healer. So it seems like there's also this ability that you don't, there's this belief at least that you don't fully need to go to someone else to train you or teach you how to become it. You could have just like an innate gift to it. So I guess I'm kind of curious about the almost visualization or even the process to doing Reiki, whether it's trained or untrained. Right. So when it comes to Reiki specifically, because there's many different kinds of energy healing. So when it comes to Reiki specifically, you must be attuned by a Reiki master. That was just the way that I was learned. That is the traditional way that it was from the original founder. And so Reiki in general is a Japanese relaxation technique that was founded in about 1990. There are other different um, lineages that were definitely um, existing way before that, but the lineage that I am under is Mikao Asui. That was like the founder of the specific lineage that I have been um, trained under and attuned to. So when it comes to Reiki, that is just the way that I know. You got to be attuned. You got to be trained by an actual master. If you're doing any other kind of healing, it's not necessarily Reiki um, unless you somehow got into the ancient archives and knew of the lineages before the 1991 with Mikao Asui. Um, if you're doing energy healing, like I just want to kind of maybe say first that everyone has the ability to heal. Um, I would say that your ability to heal yourself would probably be innately more powerful than your ability to heal other people. Um, I was healing people before I became attuned and there's just certain things that could really mess you up. Like you never want to absorb anyone's energy. And I feel like the very first thing that um, energy healers could do or something that they can kind of fall under as a mistake when they're energy healing and they're not specifically trained or attuned is, oh, okay, I'll just take all your pain away. And then they go and then they do something energetically, which is more of like a receiving kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then now that person feels good, but you didn't eat you have that. Where are you going to put it? What are you going to do with it? And so when I'm talking about Reiki or even um, my shaman apprenticeship as well, we really learn how to not absorb energy or use tools that absorb the energy so that you can then ground those tools. You can ground the energy and it's not impacting you or the space around you. Because what if you're doing energy healing um, and you're, let's say you're not even attuned or you don't really have the specific practices um, to protect yourself, to ground yourself, to make sure that you're clear. If you're doing Reiki in your home and you have pets, you have kids, you have a husband, you have a wife or a partner, maybe that energy lingers on and doesn't get to you, but it gets to someone who has been sick for a couple of weeks and now their immune system is lower, their aura is trying to shelter them, protect them, shrinks a little bit closer to them, and they have a weakened state of energy that could really impact them. And I've heard stories of it too. So it's really important that um, people kind of understand that just because someone says that they're doing Reiki, at least in my opinion, if you didn't go through the traditional route, it's not Reiki, it's their own different form of energy healing. Gotcha. And it's not to say it doesn't work, but it's just that it's not specifically Reiki. Correct. Correct. And what's really jumping out at me from what your answer was is Newton's law of, you know, no energy is transferred. What is it? Uh, Energy or matter isn't created or destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's only transferred or transformed or transferred. Geez, I got to look that back up. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think everyone knows what we're talking about. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And so that's actually a really fascinating answer that you kind of, 
it's a, it's kind of just something I'm really thinking about now, especially mm -hmm. in regards to my own things where, you know, I've kind of like visually put out, okay, I'm in a bubble, nothing bad can kind of get in. Mm -hmm. But even like, you know, that, that manipulation of food that I was kind of talking about where yeah. I visualize. And it's interesting because I guess visually I've always just been kind of pushing in, let's say positive energy in air quotes, however mm -hmm. you want to define that. Mm -hmm. But it's not, I've never really, I guess, taken out the negative per se. So mm -hmm. when you're taking it out, do you almost try to visualize, if you will, like where it's going, like whether it's going back into the earth, whether a different being is taking it because, or do you, do you even have something like, I guess, maybe like an apple that's sitting beside it and push it into the apple and then throw out the apple? Or is it, are all these valid things? How do you see a that? A couple different valid things. I mean, you really hit on the head. Um, let's kind of go backwards a little bit. You said apple. There are different foods that you can do that with. Um, I had just posted a video on TikTok about how an egg absorbs energy. Um, the shaman that I work under has used oranges to absorb energy. Um, and so that can definitely ha happen, that transfer of energy. And then you just want to make sure that you throw that egg out, you throw that, you know, uh, yeah. orange out, you don't want to use that. But in terms of like, basically what you were saying about you are putting in your positive intentions into your food, but you're not necessarily thinking of removing the negative. When it comes to things like food or water or things like that, um, I kind of think of like when you have like, think of like a cup and water and it's like really dirty, gross, there's mud in there. You can pour that out and then replace it with positive water. You may even want to wash the cup a little bit. Um, but then you can also take that same cup and then just pour a whole bunch of positive water in it. And what's going to happen naturally is that all the, the things you don't want are going to come out. And so that's that's mm -hmm. good, too. It depends on how you want to get at it. And when you are doing a lot of different kind of energy healing, you're going to figure out which one is best for that client or that person or recipient. Um, so if you're just programming your food with positive intentions, that's great. Um, when, I, when I do it, I definitely am putting my Reiki symbols on it. And I always work with um, Gaia. I love Mother Nature. I love Earth. And we're going to get into her too about how we're grounding it. Um, but I always just give her gratitude. And what I do, I don't know if anyone else does this probably, but I just think about literally all the food that's on my plate and how it was in its original form. So from the ground and how it grew, whether it was the chicken, whether it was, you know, yeah, the corn, this. whatever <laughs> it is, and just like see it grow in your head and just be grateful for the whole entire process. I'm grateful for the people who are the farmers. I'm grateful for the people at the store who sold it to me. I'm grateful for that whole entire process and all that gratitude kind of takes it all out. So I'm not necessarily like a vegan or a vegetarian or have ever claimed to be, um, but I feel like Praying over your food is definitely one way to kind of take out um, like the fear that those animals had gone through and all the pain and the trauma because you can definitely eat that. I mean, there's been times where I've bet you've eaten at your favorite restaurant and then like the one time you eat that burger just didn't sit right. Like you don't know what was happening with the chef's energy that day. You don't know what was happening to that cow's energy that day. Um, but to get more into Mother Gaia, you always want to either visualize it or actually physically do it with the earth because Mother Earth has this energy where it can take in everything, everything. It has more than enough of a capacity to be able to withhold and take in and use and then bring life um, into the world with what you give her. So that could be the stress, the anger, the anxiety, the pain, the trauma, whatever it is. So when it comes to Reiki energy, if I am extracting something, I can either give it up to the guides, the higher self, any sort of ancestors, ascended masters who are here to help. So I'm going to go above their aura and give it to them, or I can take it and I can throw it into the ground. I could also light a candle and throw it into the fire too. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to. I definitely want to emphasize what you were saying about visualizing that whole process. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I came across it. I wish I remembered, but somehow someone some way someone i heard about that and it blew my mind because the first time i did that you know going through the whole process right if i had meat or if i had vegetables if i had eggs like rethinking okay you know the chicken was in the best state possible laid this egg then the farmer was in love when he picked up the egg and then he put that on the truck then the truck got to the grocery store you know i went bought it from the grocery store everyone was happy along the way I kid you not, it was the most delicious meal that I ever ate in my entire life. Yeah. It freaking it. it blew my freaking mind. I had I, you know, to this day, I'm just like in shock that that happened. And so with that saying, I mean, it it, it is an extensive process, right? It, it does take a little mm -hmm. bit of energy physically and mentally 
is that something that you do anytime you eat something, especially if you have, let's say a salad, right? Where there's Mm -hmm. carrots, there's olives, there's dressing, there's olive oil, there's, I don't know, onions. I mean, you have four or five different things. Do you, do you mentally rehearse that every time you drink something or going to eat something? Yeah. So it's not necessarily for every single individual item on the plate. Um, like carrot, thank you. Corn, thank you. <laughs> it's like everything else on here, thank you. And I just kind of imagine it all. Um, but it can happen in an instant. So it's really not too long of a process. But I do, yeah, I program my water and I program my food. And I have been doing that ever since I got Reiki too. And I was like, I could put Reiki in anything. And I just like went crazy with it. And um, I by now I feel like a lot of people, especially who listen to this podcast, should know that you can program water, whether you are attuned to Reiki or energy healing or not. But um, I would just take my time to do so and just a quick little prayer. And it was always like interesting to me that I started to do that because I never really grew up with a religious background or anything. So praying over my food, I was always looking at other families like, oh, oh, okay. Like I didn't know like what to do or <laughs> didn't really resonate. And now I'm that person who's just like, excuse me, like I have to go pray over my food and just like set the good intentions <laughs> for it. But because of the attunement that I went through, it became a habit to where like, I really don't even forget to do it. It's just kind of like a rhythm and a flow. And mm. if I do maybe have a couple bites and I like forget to do it, I'll just like sit and do it again because I'll something will tell me. I guess it's become so much of a habit. Maybe it's my higher self, but something will tell me like, hey, just, you know, tell <laughs> Gaia that you love her for that. And I was like, okay, good. And I usually program it with not just like positivity, but something that I need. Like if I am sick, oh, thank you for the health and well-being. Or if I am like emotionally not okay, like thank you for the stability. Thank you for the emotional balance. And it's usually always programming something that I need that day. That's I've, I've thought about that as well, especially because it's something that's going to be digested and literally integrated with your fabric of being. Mm-hmm. I, I have thought about that and and where my mind's kind of going as well in terms of this energetic alignment and healing. You know, have you do you kind of do this on yourself as well where you can pull out as well as in not that I have done this but <laughs> in mm-hmm. terms of like the food where and I'm thinking of this in terms of like the chakra system where there's certain energy centers in the body that are going to hold on to certain blockages. Mm-hmm. Will you kind of do Reiki on your, can you, first of all, can you do Reiki on yourself? And if you do, do you kind of isolate a certain chakra, if you will, based on something that you're trying to manifest? Man, that seems like a really long-winded question, but hopefully that came across. No, that was like a spot-on question. Yes, you can do Reiki on yourself. Yes, I do it on myself almost every single day, as well as other practices that I have uh, developed through my sh- shaman apprenticeship. Um, but it's it's best to always get to the root, if you can find the root. So if you're not feeling very stable um, and it's just like an emotional thing, you want to navigate where that is. And usually if it's an emotional or mental thing, it's kind of easier if you know about the chakras to go ahead and investigate and say, okay, if I'm feeling some like um, disempowerment right now, I'll just go to that solar plexus. If I'm feeling a lack of stability or security or fear or anxious, worry, whatever, like the very, very like shameful, embarrassed energies, I'm going to already know based off of my previous knowledge that I'm going to get to the root. Um, But usually, um, if you are having these blockages or the stagnant energy that has been unchecked, unreleased, it's going to start to manifest in a physical way and you're going to feel the pain. So for all those people who are like waking up and they're like, man, I just, I don't know what it is, but like my knee is hurting and like I didn't have any trauma to the knee. I didn't do anything, but that's how you know, like you got to go get to that knee. Now, is there something in that knee that's a blockage? Maybe but it could also be referred pain. And so it could be hurting you in your knee, but maybe it's an issue with the heart. Maybe it's an issue with the throat. So then there's a little bit more investigation that you may need to do. And if you can't do it alone, then definitely getting a practitioner would help you. And that would be the best option. And so it could be this like, so then how do you go about maybe even identifying that there is a quote unquote issue? Do you utilize your external world of things that let's say aren't showing up how you desire are you feeling into your body intuitively when certain things occur? Like what like what kind of occurs in your life whenever you're like, oh, okay, that's something that I need to heal or want to heal. Maybe needs the wrong word, but mm-hmm. that's something I want to heal or that's something I can heal. How do you kind of come about those new things, let's say? Yeah, you definitely... 
it's definitely important to make sure that you are looking at every single aspect of life because yes, life is a reflection of you. Yes, life is a mirror, but life is kind of like a game. And the more that you play and interact with it, the more it's going to play and interact with you. Your higher self or your spirit guides, your spiritual team, the universe is always speaking to you. This episode of Traveling to Consciousness is brought to you by Conscious Technologies, LLC. Talk about an aligned company name. This company creating technology that will revolutionize the way that humanity is able to resonate or vibrate with the electromagnetic frequency of your phone, of your Wi-Fi router, of the light bulbs in your house, of really anything. What they do is they have created these amazing minerals, amazing units that you can either place on the back of your phone, you can wear it as a necklace, or they even have like little in-house generators, if you will, that can unify the entire field of an entire house. I've experienced these things in person and I unequivocally can tell you that it does something and it helps you feel more present, more calm, and more connected to the spiritual dimension, if you will. And I highly recommend that you also check out episode number 034, where I actually talked to one of the co-founders and it it blew my mind away. One of my favorite episodes where we actually get into how he creates it, why it's created. And, you know, if this wasn't enough of a sell for you, go check out that episode because I know that it will sell you after that. Conscious Technologies, LLC, harmonizing the planet one person at a time. All the time it is you that needs to tune in and listen. So if you're unconsciously going through this universe and you're just not aware of anything, then you're kind of in the matrix, right? You just don't really know what's going on. And how are you going to know that like your back pain is from 10 years ago when somebody yelled at you? You know, like you won't really make that connection. But if you are someone who is kind of in this journey a little bit more and you're, you know, seeing other people go through ailments, you're seeing or hearing other people go through things and you're seeing how it's connecting in their life and then you end up with a pain, maybe that triggers you. Something in you reminds you and you listen at that moment, you're the most relaxed or you're most receptive to it that you're like, okay, this pain is happening because of this. Like, oh, my friend has been in an abusive relationship for a very long time and now she can't stop getting these like heart chest pains. Like you start to kind of use what you see in terms of other people around you, other circumstances around you, world events around you as well. Sometimes people could be a really nice channel, but if they don't know how to protect themselves or if they have a weakened aura, world events, they'll feel it and they won't know. And they're like, I don't really know what's wrong with me. So awareness is a super huge first step and being able to listen at any given moment to what the universe is trying to tell you, the physical pain in your body, things that are happening act- actually to your physical vessel. You want to listen to those. Um, but I feel like one of the most important things is like, how do you know if something's wrong with you if you don't know? what's wrong with you. And that I always say, tune into your higher self. So you can do this every single day right after you wake up or right before you go to bed. Or if you're just having like a day where you're like, what's going on with my day? Like this is straight chaos. Like I need some sort of clarity. You can just close your eyes, breathe in a couple times. And once you practice this, it gets a lot easier. But ask your higher self one question, like what's going on? And just be silent. Just be silent if you can. And usually the first thought that pops into your mind is your higher self. Whether you question it or doubt it or whatever, it usually is that. Try not to get your logic mind into it too much and just focus on, okay, well, why are you showing me what happened at 2 p.m. and lunch yesterday? And they're like, what happened at 2 p.m. lunch yesterday? I was like, (laughs) oh, actually, I did get this weird phone call, you know, like from this person from my past. So if you don't know what's going on with you or if you're maybe afraid that you're unaware of what's going on with you, tapping into that higher self is going to be your surefire way. It's like the best Google in the universe <laughs> is your higher self. It's almost like that uh, search engine on demand. Exactly. Is that something uh, that you've been, I guess, let's say in contact with or in touch with before the, your Reiki and ASMR days when you're being your higher self? Yeah, but I had no idea what it was, who it was or anything. And it wasn't like, I'm hearing voices or, oh my gosh, something telling me what to do. It's like, no, we all have it, whether it serves as like an impulse, whether it serves as like, I don't know why I did this thing, but I just did it anyway. And then I, you know, my life got better or I felt better or that was the right thing to say to this person who's in a crisis, who's my best friend. And for me, that was a lot of it where um, I was very able to communicate things to people 
and have this sort of like wisdom when I've never been in their situation before. But I feel like it was my ability to understand at least emotionally and mentally what they were going through, even if I didn't mm-hmm. physically go through that experience before. And so um, that kind of awareness was there and I was using it. And I feel like everybody uses that kind of awareness at some point, unless you're actively like trying to block it um, or you have maybe severe trauma that is blocking you from having that kind of connection and then expressing it, embodying it. Um, But as I got older and I was like, oh my gosh, crystals and pendulums. And then I was like doing more energy stuff. And then I heard of the term higher self. I didn't hear the term higher self until I was about 23 or 24 years old. And so it was like fairly recent within like this past decade where I heard it for the first time. And then I was like, wait a second. And then it was just like because I made that one like click or epiphany, I just remembered all the times in my past where my higher self was actually helping me out. And I was like, dang, like I wish I knew so that I could like (laughs) do more with that information when I was going through it. But, you know, it's never too late. Yeah, at least you have the awareness now. Right. And so was that kind of the unlocking of, right? Because we, I guess we've been kind of talking about, relatively speaking, of like the voice in your head. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you, I guess, in that click, was that kind of whenever you were able to discern the difference between maybe that egoic, always chattering away voice that's in your head versus oh shit, like, no, this is my higher self speaking now. Like, this is the divine knowledge that I should listen to as opposed to, okay, this is kind of just mindless chatter of the mind. Right. I had to understand what a higher self was, and I had to understand the energy of my higher self individually before I could even comprehend what an ego was doing. So Mm. it happened to me first where I just knew like textbook what higher self was. And then from there, when it got to the ego, I was like, okay, there's major differences here. And for me, one of the biggest like takeaways when I was in that moment was like, okay, your ego is always going to try to hold you back out of protection, out of caution. Um, and out of the experiences that it just doesn't want you to experience again because it may have been painful. Um, And your higher self is always going to try and push you forward. So your higher self is always going to talk you into something. Your ego may not always talk you into something unless it's talking you into something that is instant gratification um, or, you know, a common way of living, like an autopilot that you have been doing. But the second that you're wanting to switch that and listen to your higher self, you may have that habit of going back into the ego. So for me, the biggest things were like, okay, anything that sounds like fear, doubt, worry, or talking me out of something is going to be my ego and anything that sounds quieter as well. Your ego is going to be the loudest thing in the room, the loudest thing in your head. (laughs) Your higher self is going to be the quietest. Yeah. I guess to me, I don't know how it would feel like with you, but it usually is like almost this like subtler voice. It's almost like a Mm -hmm. little bit more. Okay. Yeah. You feel it's the same way. Yeah. It's definitely gentle. It's definitely there for you. Definitely caring, non-judgmental, but can definitely have traits of your own personality, which is interesting because I feel like a lot of the time people are like, ego is just like, personality but your higher self can have some personality too so it it'll come to you or communicate with you in a way that you're um able to receive it the best so for me i'm like a very sassy person in real life i mean maybe i seem really like sweet right now but i'm sassy like i like to just i don't know i'm latina i'm loud i'm a taurus my throat is super activated i like to just say things as it is i'm very direct i'm never mean i'm never rude i'm just like direct and i just say things in a sassy way and i've gotten in trouble for it in the past but sometimes my higher (laughs) self if if i'm like having a full-on blown conversation with my higher self it'll come to me in a very sassy way and I'll be like, all right, you're right. And then shake hands and move on. I'm laughing because I, this might be why I was the first podcast you came to, because I very much, the direct nature has gotten me into far too many issues in my life that mm-hmm. I've, I've had to learn from in the past couple of years. I understand that. I've, I've gotten into trouble. I've gotten into trouble <laughs> with very close loved ones, and they still love me. But um, yeah, sometimes what you say has a little bit of a bite. And sometimes people, that's what I'm saying. Like they receive information differently. They don't receive it in a very direct way, or maybe they have issues with maybe a little bit more um, stereotypical masculine, divine masculine energy. They don't vibe with that well. And they vibe more with like a nurturing and loving kind of energy. Then they're going to think that your directness is a straight attack to them, like a personal attack. Mm, Yeah. Because it's almost more piercing. Do you think because I guess as you're even saying this, this is a new thought that I've had, I guess. Mm-hmm. As you're saying that, it seems to me that if you are integrated in a divine feminine and a divine masculine way, you 
sh- damn it. I was going to say should. I don't want to say should. Mm-hmm. If you're in a divine or masculine or feminine way, it seems to me that you'd be able to receive information coming from a direct and even just a nurturing way, it, mm-hmm. it can, assuming that both have positive intention for you. Do you feel like that's like if if you're reacting negatively to a direct message, especially if it's coming from a place of love and let's say it's delivered in a divine masculine way, could that be an element of an unhealed part of you or could it just be a part of your psyche or your personality to not resonate with message being delivered in that way? I think one of the biggest things that will influence that would be your heart chakra. If your heart chakra is not in a balanced state, I love the way you say chakra, by the way. <laughs> chakra, yeah, that's the chakra. way it's, you know, chakra. Okay. Yeah, that's the more, um, I don't know what the word, what the word is to call it, but that's the way it should be pronounced. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Chakra is a little bit more, more Western. Yeah. yeah, a little bit more Western. <laughs> I like to at least, you know, I'm, as I'm learning, I, I do what I can in the energy healing field to know about tradition as much as I can, not culturally appropriate as much as I can. And sometimes it's hard because new age and modern spirituality is everywhere. It's the fastest thing that you can consume. Um, And so when people are learning about it, you know, it's not their fault if they, you know, don't know the differences yet. And they don't have this decolonized brain when it comes to what they're learning in terms of energy and healing and things like that and medicine. So when I found out I was saying chakra like chakra, I was like, oh, no, I'm changing that. And, you know, if people hear me and they're like, oh, I like the way they say it, maybe it will allow them to say it in the correct pronunciation as well. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, I have plenty of stories with how powerful words are and names. Yeah. And and so even maybe that slight energetic shift could, I don't know, pivot it in some way. But I digress. We I cut you off a little yes. bit about the heart no, chakra. Okay, the heart space. Divine, Talking about the heart space. Yeah. Energies. So um, if someone is getting offended or if you take offense to something, if you're taking something as a personal attack and it really was not a personal attack, even if it was a personal attack and you get phased by it, you may have a little bit of an issue with the heart. I would probably say the solar plexus as well if it hit your confidence um, level, if it made you feel like a low self-esteem, if it made you feel insecure. But um, I would say that if someone is saying something to you in a direct way and you're taking that as a personal attack, you could probably work on your heart space a little bit more because if your heart space was in a very good space where it was activated, it was in flow, um, it wasn't blocked by anything, it was in balance and alignment with everything else, you have all the unconditional love for yourself and you know yourself better than anyone else and you love yourself you know, to an extraordinary divine amount and you will love everyone else. It doesn't mean you have to like everyone else, but you can love them in terms of that's your personality. That's the way that you say things. I'm not going to take that, you know, mm. I'm not going to take that as a as a way to then project onto you what now I feel about you and then do the same to you. If you talk to me in a direct way and it was just very um, like simple and you're just being cut short and dry and you're trying to help me out and now I'm using my sassiness as an attack for you <laughs> to just like make you feel as painful as I felt that that's not what you really want. That's not the most effective way to have that conversation but people will remain unchecked Mm. they don't know sometimes and then that's when a lot of times and i've had to deal with this my whole entire life where sometimes i'll just take things personally and it wasn't even maybe directed towards me and i'm just like putting myself into the situation like no girl check yourself and see your way out and the times where i've had the most balanced heart chakra nobody in the world could have you know i could have been in a toxic abusive relationship and their words would not get to me because the heart is where I was knowing myself in full. And no matter what anyone else said, that's just your personality. That's the way that you talk it has nothing to do with me. Yeah, that's fascinating. There's a, something that occurred. Was it today or yesterday? I think it was today. I was in the locker room after jujitsu and I said something like they, they were, the guys were talking about something. And I think I said something along the lines of like, oh, maybe I was being so and so. Like I was like, uh, like, kind of like almost like uh softening up what I had just said, like, Oh, maybe mm-hmm. I was being a little bit this. And the guy took that and was like, yeah, you were definitely being this. And I could feel like energetically this mm-hmm. like kind of pushback of like, Whoa, like, you know, it was almost this feeling of him capitalizing on me trying to be almost vulnerable in a sense. Right. Like this feeling right. of, okay, I'm going to take a step back. And then like him taking that energy to push like the nail in even deeper. Mm-hmm. And it, 
it was really fascinating to me because there was like, it was funny because this guy was having a bad day beforehand. And so like the instant he kind of said that I like revealed all like the times that he that day had been saying like these kind of like off the cuff, like Mm -hmm. arrow pointed things. And yeah, and I think to your point, right, if you have this open heart space, which I I'm still trying to open it up even more, I think there's Mm -hmm. some more opening to be done. But (laughs) Where I'm at, we now. all need that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> send some, send some extra heart open chakra, chakra in this uh, podcast. Some heart activations for sure. Yeah, <laughs> send them this way. But so, all right, where was I going with that? Oh, it was just fascinating to kind of feel that pushback, but then not take action on it. Right, being able to understand the whole inner dynamics of him and what he's saying and why he's saying it and taking my ego out of it even to realize like it's not anything about me it's just that's the space he's in I don't want to be a part of it so I'm just going to walk out of this room and carry on with my day Mm -hmm. true I would turn it into a joke Mm. I don't know what it is about me I I think it's uh just one of the skills that I had but like if there was if I was in jujitsu and if if people were talking to me and I said something and I was like oh I digress or I take you know I'm gonna tone it down a bit and someone used that as a as a time to kind of like capitalize off of that a little bit um i would just make a joke like yeah like i was a b wasn't i or like you know just do something where it just completely like, i just have like this thing where if someone's over inflating i'll just pop it mm. and just like with the kindest like thing or it's just neutralize it in a way where they can't escalate even further and then i feel like that's also a way that maybe i'm energy healing them like in that moment so mm. then they can understand that also don't come for me either because if you're gonna if if you know i said something and you're gonna throw something at me i'm just gonna catch it and throw it on the ground and then just watch what you do because the minute i throw it back at you now we're, now we're creating something we're co-creating something that we both don't want and a lot of the times if they're having the worst day they're gonna win you know because they yeah. have more of like, that anger. energy yeah because you're competing yeah. in the energy of let's say just anger almost yeah i guess anger yeah like you're competing in the realm of anger and it's it's Mm -hmm. funny too because i think i have done that before where i've spun it into a joke but nine times out of ten it comes across as like being the pointed angle kind of back at them and it'll Mm -hmm. almost like unravel them more and so i don't know i I like the idea of making it into a joke but yeah it's a skill it's a skill and if it's not working then yeah walk away (laughs) like at the end of the day if you couldn't make it happen like you know it's all good if push comes to shove exactly so i'm kind of curious though if we want to take it back to the reiki and asmr Mm -hmm. state of things how have these things changed your life like i mean coming into contact with your higher self reiki asmr what had what was Mystique's life before and after coming into these tools? Crazy. I had another business. I was a makeup artist for over 13 years. Oh wow. Um, I was unfortunately in back to back abusive relationships, which did not help. And then after, you know, the fact when I learned Reiki and all this energy stuff, actually learning about energy healing got me out of a toxic relationship where I was so unconscious to it and I was so like not aware of like what was actually going on because it wasn't necessarily physical it was more so like the psychological and the emotional and I was just like going with the bunches and just like existing and when I got more into energy healing I it was just like my vision got clearer and clearer of what was going on and I was like I don't have to keep choosing this this is something that I keep choosing and The more I was clearing, the more I was opening, the more I was learning, the more that they were getting agitated and they were like doing all these things. I'm like, I'm feeling peaceful. Like, I don't know what your issue is. And it was because they didn't have a punching bag anymore, like in a verbal sense or like an emotional sense. And they couldn't like, you know, take whatever they had going on and put it onto me anymore. And so basically learning about all this energy healing allowed me to at a time where it was I was not doing very well in the um, makeup space just because of the global pandemic. And it's like, how are you going to be a makeup artist if you can't come into contact with anybody? So I was definitely challenged in that way of figuring out, like, is this still something that I want to do? And I was already having my own issues with that um, in terms of like, I loved doing it, but do I want to monetize it? You know, Mm -hmm. is it doing any wonders for me to monetize something that I love so much and maybe want to keep for myself. So learning about energy healing didn't only just like change my life in terms of the relationships that I had with people or my self-esteem. I went into um, 
all this energy healing and learning about chakras because of my mental health and the anxiety and the depression that I was falling into, the PTSD that I was falling into. And I just was like, what? how can I fix this? There's got to be a way. And I got into energy healing. I was like, this is the way. Like, it's working <laughs> and it's lasting. And so, um, again, the relationship aspect, the mental and emotional aspect that helped me. But in a very physical aspect, it allowed me to branch off into a completely new business for myself. And now it's like, I'm living alone. I'm so happy. Like, it's just, it's allowed me to feel a lot more independent. It's allowed me to have more of a sense of authority within myself. And now it benefits all the people who are in my life right now, because if they're going through something, I'm like, I got something for that. You know, it's like, I know exactly how to pinpoint it and make your life better. And if there's one thing that I wanted to do in this world was always just like help people like feel better just point blank period, whether it was a time where they were crying, whether it was a time where they were just like stressed. It's like, I just always want to make you feel better. And in the past, it was like a lot of comedy or just throw a joke out there. And, you know, that's instant. But I think then it kind of transformed into know like what is something that's more long lasting that's going to make people happy. And then this just kind of showed up into my life. And when energy healing showed up to my life and having like my more psychic activations happened, it was literally a no brainer. There was nowhere else that made sense for me to go or to look into. It was not like I was going to like pick up another hobby after energy healing. It was like, no, this is what it is. And now I want to learn all of the methods that I possibly can. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Well, so then if we even wrap in, I guess the story that I was laying out there at jujitsu with what you're bringing up here, did you notice, I guess, in the, in the last abusive relationship, whenever you kind of started healing yourself, right. And you were no mm -hmm. longer able to be the punching bag for him. Mm -hmm. Did you see in any way that it would have healed him as well? Or did it more just disconnect your energies and kind of go on your separate ways? It was definitely like your time is done with this person. Mm. Like, leave, like, go away, go find something else. Um, there is definitely, you know, in the last stretch of things, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to use what I have learned to to help in the ways that I can. But that's the thing about healing. If someone is not ready to, it's never going to work. And it's not that I was pushing it on them by any means, but it's like when it came to anybody that I was finding at that time for like a service, it's like you can't just walk up to someone, hey, I can heal you. Like, or, you know, <laughs> hey, you have these energy centers and blah, blah, blah. You sound like a wacko. Like, you sound crazy if they don't know what's going on. And so it was just like this strange thing where I was actually, um, healing in a raw, real, true, and authentic way. And they were actually mimicking it. And the, I always like use the analogy or the metaphor, like there were just, it was like a little demon trying to ride on the coattails of an angel wing, you know, <laughs> or something like that, where it's like, you're trying to like bypass literally everything. This episode of Traveling to Consciousness is brought to you by Mushy Love. Mushy Love is a latte type blendable mushroom caffeine free elixir that honestly tastes like a liquid cinnamon roll. And I know that you're going to find that on their website, but it's honestly true. It's stacked with more than twice the amount of mushrooms as any other mushroom latte. And I know that there's one in particular that we all think about, which kind of starts with the word mud, but this one blows that one out of the water. I highly highly recommend if you even try that one to just give this one a shot and i promise you that you will not you will not be sorry because i just uh it's so good it's honestly so good and i want to get to a place where i can actually just they send me these all the time for free so please go and buy it because if you buy more then they'll start sending me more and it's just honestly a win-win because it tastes amazing like even in water so even if you're cutting even if you don't want to like put milk and or coffee with it you can just do it plain in water and it's so freaking good guys go click the sponsors link below scroll down to mushy love buy your pack today remember promo code clayton promo code i can't even talk right now promo code clayton at checkout for 10 percent off your purchase mushy love mushrooms shouldn't have to taste like mud give yourself some mushy love but like use the terms that you've learned basically through me so they were kind of getting into the spiritual field but in a very surface not authentic kind of way and so when that started happening, it turned into then like spiritual abuse. And I'm like, no, like you're not going to gaslight me in like this final <laughs> version of life. Like there's, it's definitely not going to be this way. And so it basically was like the end. And it was just so many little 
signs and so many things. And, and every single time it was like I was inching away, my like world of options and opportunity got bigger and bigger. And I always say that like the universe is a game. The universe is like the biggest game of hot and cold there is. It's like if it's meant for you, there's going to be all these opportunities. And if it's like cold and you're far away from where you should be, you're going to feel very little. You're going to feel very small. You're going to feel like you can't really do anything. There's not much wiggle room. And you either pivot and try a different direction or you keep running into the cold, running into the cold, running into the cold. And it takes a rock bottom tower card moment for you to hopefully realize what you're doing is the opposite of what you should be. I really like that hot and cold analogy. Yeah. How does that play out in regards to anything, right? Whether it's like, or can you dive into that a little bit more? Synchronicity. Probably? Synchronicity. So if, if you're getting you're, warmer, okay, then you're going to see all the synchronicities happen. And that's when people sometimes, especially um, in the beginning of their spiritual journey, they're going to have all the angel numbers pop up. And then they're going to be very curious about what the angel numbers mean. And then that is going to be like, okay, this angel number has something to do with like a monetary thing. And then you, you know, do something in the monetary aspect in your job and your workplace. And let's say that this person that you're about to cold call has like 777 is the first three. And that was the like message that you got a day before. And then you, you call them and they're like a hot prospect now. So it's just like, it's always going to come in synchronicities. It's always going to come in like repetitions as well, where it's like this, 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 this. I mean, how many reminders have we got about something and then we still choose to ignore it and then something bad happens? Like, I remember there was this one time where um, I had like, this wallet that wasn't even a wallet it was like a card holder but i was like treating it like a wallet and like putting all like my things in there and it was just like literally overflowing and i kept telling myself i gotta go get like an actual purse i gotta go get a bag i gotta get this and my higher self kept telling me telling me telling me until the point where i uh, traveled to colorado and i went to a whole foods and i was you know paying for my things and i don't know what happened i paid for my things and by the time that i got from the whole foods to the hotel that i was at it was gone the, the wallet was gone. And I was like, if it were a purse and it wasn't so small, like I would have been mm. able to like, you know, not drop it anywhere and not recognize where it was. So the universe is always going to come to you in repetitions for sure mm. if it's for you. Um, also, other people around you, um, higher self can talk to you directly, but it can also talk through your friends and family members or random people that you meet on the street, customers, clients, and you'll know because there's <clears throat> something that like happens in their energy and in their eyes. Like they're talking directly to you, but through you. And those moments that it happens, especially if you're very sensitive to energy and you're on this journey of playing the hot and cold with the universe, you'll recognize it and know it. And then you're repeating it to your friend. You know, the second you get home, you're like, this person said this to me and blah, blah, blah. And then your friend's probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, I just saw a podcast about this exact same thing that your person said. And it's always gonna be, again, the repetitions, the synchronicities, and it's gonna be an internal feeling as well. Um, usually the happier you feel while you're doing something is gonna be the best for you. But even if you're doing something that you think is gonna make you happy, like let's say my business and I was a makeup artist, was keeping me happy for a while but after you know some time i was getting so frustrated with oh, i have to do this photo shoot and oh my gosh i have to you know work with mm -hmm. this client now and i'm like wasn't i just like manifesting new clients wasn't i just manifesting a photo shoot like i should be enjoying doing this and if i'm not then there's a bigger question and there's some root work that needs to be done mm -hmm. yeah i've been noticing a lot of i i've been noticing a lot of that the what you're talking about with it's speaking through other people a lot recently mm -hmm. where if we're having like a conversation, I'll catch myself like not caring about what's being said. And the instant I have that thought, I'm like, wait a second, there's something in here for me. Like, let me hear what it is. And mm -hmm. it can't be more than two seconds after I usually have that thought that like this like blast of just they'll say like one sentence and I'll just vibrate to my core. And I'm like, oh, shit, like that's why I was supposed to listen to this conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. That's happened to me with uh, music a lot, too, where I'll just like it'll be regular music or um, like radio or something like that. And I'm just like zoning out driving. And then for that second, and it's so weird because it's very hard to explain because it's such an energetic thing, but you just kind of your energy just something where it like aligns and then like your literal ears or your energetic ears like tune in and then you'll hear the line of a lyric and you're just thinking a thought that had to deal with that. And you're like, wow interesting so there's always these little moments of alignment that just kind of come together and you have to be able to not just write them off right away because 
people can write them off as coincidences, but coincidences, coincidences are just two incidences coinciding. So it's just like, don't try to diminish, you know, what a coincidence is for you. Take that as, okay, this means something. You can choose how much it means to you and how little it means to you. Because sometimes if you are awakening and you are seeing all the synchronicities, there are times where you can kind of get caught in the race of everything and everything has meaning and then you're making these connections and forming these patterns that actually don't really connect it's like you have to be able to have that um balance where everything connects everything is one but also not everything has to mean every single thing it's like discernment within it it's definitely discernment and that's why it's so important in energy healing um to work on your lower chakras first and to get that that lower three physical connection that you have to the earth and the material physical world like in balance and in alignment because if not if you're so overwhelmed with all the synchronicities and all the downloads and all the codes and everything that's going on in your headspace that can lead to lots of different mental health issues like dissociation depersonalization derealization schizophrenia things like that yeah shit um yeah it was a uh... Oh, that was a pretty big shift right at the end there because now I'm yeah. not sure where I want to take this conversation. <laughs> That's okay. You can take it wherever you please. Yeah. Well, thank you. Of course. <laughs> I, I was originally thinking about, oh, when you were talking about the angel numbers. And yeah. it was funny because as you were talking about it, and this is a perfect example of what we were just saying, the number that has kept coming to me were sevens, seven, seven, yeah. seven, seven. And then you mm -hmm. use that as your example. And so mm -hmm. now I'm sitting here like, oh, fuck. Like, You're like seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually one of the few numbers that I don't have a representation for or I'm not fully aware of what it represents. So are you mm -hmm. aware of what the sevens are? To be honest, no. It's been a while since I've kept up with all of the numerology. And it's it's kind of different as well, depending on who you ask, mm. which I find very interesting. Um, so a lot of the times, again, we're going to have to like – say the same thing, but discernment really matters. So let's say that for you, you have a thought going on and then you see a whole bunch of sevens. See what you were thinking or feeling before you saw all those sevens. Um, and then the next time you see them, think if something was a correlation there. If, oh, at a certain time, like for, for instance, maybe not necessarily with numbers, um, I'm really connected to one of my dogs. I have two dogs and one of them has like this really weird, like spiritual connection with me where if I am overthinking about something and it's, it's really impacting my thoughts, he'll just start barking and it, br it breaks me out of it. And I get annoyed because I'm like, what are you barking at this time? And then I realize like, oh, well, actually what I was thinking was not even like healthy or conducive. And so that can kind of be similar to when you're getting the synchronicities with the numbers, like, oh, this just happened. Something really good happened. I see a seven. Okay. Let me follow maybe sevens for a little bit, or maybe pick seven for something in the future if it ever comes along. Um, also when you get like tarot card readings as well, those have a lot of numbers in them too. So mm. let's say that you have a tarot reading because you're having some sort of hardship with like your mom and then it keeps saying like three 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 and then you're like okay i'm seeing all these threes i'm having a hardship with my mom and in the future you see you know a building that says like family therapy or something like that and like the the address starts with like two threes it's just like little things like that where you're like okay i could feel more inclined to go through there and it doesn't mean that you have to like go to that building and go to that family therapist but maybe those threes attracted your eye to see family therapy and you're like actually i never really thought about family therapy let me go online and, and search it and see if that's something that would work out for us this episode of traveling to consciousness is brought to you by superpass now, what the hell is Superpass, you might be asking? Well, I use Superpass to host my website, host all of my amazing content. I use them for my app, the app, the amazing app that I know you're listening to this on that I don't even need to tell you about that's available on the Amazon. and oh, It's not available on Amazon. It's available on the iOS and Google Play Store. That app, the one that you're listening to this podcast on, the Traveling to Consciousness app, they're absolutely amazing. So honestly, if you're a content creator and need to organize and put things in one place, I highly Highly recommend Superpass. They have an amazing community. They have an amazing support team who I've always been in contact with, reaching out with, and they're always increasing that product. So I highly recommend it. At checkout, I highly also recommend that you use promo code Clayton2022 because you'll receive 10% off your first 12 months of a yearly or monthly package, which is up to like a $300 value, which is crazy. So 
please go do that. Check that out. Click the link below, go down to sponsors, click on the super pass affiliate link and sign up today. Super pass everything you need to build a content business. So spirit never gives you the whole entire message. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. But when it comes to synchronicities and numbers like that, when they're a little bit like smaller of things and they're not like full blown downloads and codes, it's just a little piece of the puzzle. You kind of got to put it together a little bit and you will put it together. It's like little breadcrumbs that you have to be able to digest and process. I find it interesting the way that you're elaborating on this, because historically speaking, the way I would do it is if I was seeing a certain number multiple times, I would what is it? I would like look online and say, okay, spiritual significance of 777. And then I would read through it and say, okay, which one of these resonates with me the most? But what I'm finding interesting in your response, well, as a, to end that, I would usually take that and always associate it with that number. But what's mm-hmm. interesting is what you're saying, where these numbers can actually, for lack of a better word, change or manipulate the meaning of them, given the point in time that you're seeing them, right? So you know, take seven, 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 for instance, and I'm thinking about money or something like that when it's in that realm, then it's like this, it's kind of like this path of, okay, the next time I see it, let me see if it like resonates with money. And then you see Mm -hmm. like a for sale sign or something. And it's like a house that maybe you should buy, you know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. I find that interesting in your response that I haven't heard before, which is that the, the significance of this particular number can change. And then you can use that as almost like this bread, like breadcrumb path in order to figure out what the meaning of it is or what the next step is for yourself. Yeah. And I developed that kind of way for myself because at first it was the whole, I'm going to look this up and see what it means. Mm. But after a certain amount of time, first I was getting tired of Googling everything and then I kept forgetting what the numbers <laughs> meant. But then I was like, sometimes these are just saying the same thing, trust in the universe and, yeah. and your, your angels are talking to you. And I'm like, there's got to be more than just that. And like, there are like f- for eight, I know that eight has a lot to do with, um, money and abundance and good fortune and good luck. I know that for sure. When it comes to like 10, we're talking more about completion. And nine is like right about that time of completion where you're just maybe at a lull, things are getting a little bit slower in life. So there are certain numbers that do mean specific things. But again, it really depends on who you're talking to and like what their um, their influence is and their experiences and their knowledge is. Zero is going to be like creator, source energy, um, universal. Zero can also mean ascended master. So if you're seeing a lot of zero, zero, zeros, it could be that your angels are trying to talk to you in that moment. But again, it was the whole uh, hyper fixation on seeing the numbers and trying to figure out what the the number was on online and feeling like all of it was just continually like repeating the same thing over and over. And I was like, well, at that point, it becomes not necessarily helpful. And if it's just positive, wishful thinking, I can do that on my own. But let me see how they connect in my own life, because it could literally just, just be that this number is pointing me in a direction. It doesn't actually mean like got to go do this thing right now, which is pointing to the other thing where then I'm like, oh, that's what it was. And that's why I saw all these numbers. Yeah. I really like that. I really like that for basically all the reasons that you laid out there where it seems Mm -hmm. like once you get to that certain point, it's like, do you really want to just keep looking these up? And, and yeah, it's so funny because I actually even started looking up uh, seven, seven, seven spiritual significance of it. It's like, you are perfect and pure. It's like, you will receive a gift, you know? And so it's like, you are yeah. a spiritual being. It's like, okay, I already fucking knew all this shit. There's no way that spirit is literally giving me four sevens to just be like, Hey, you're a spiritual being. Meanwhile, yeah. it's like, dude, I run a spiritual podcast. I fucking know I'm a spiritual being. Yeah. You know? I do this. This is what we do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, fun. I, I like this. I'm actually going to have to play with this. And it even brings back how it's a game. It brings back that like, okay, you can, it's almost like these like little side quests that you can have fun with it. And Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, like that's something I'm trying to get. I'm trying to implement more of in my life, which is like this kind of like game or joy mentality with all of these certain things, because I mean, I've just been inundated with like keeping things too serious, almost like Mm -hmm. even from lifting to working out, if you miss a certain workout, then, you know, you're going to get fat and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, obviously like there needs to be some rest involved. There needs to be some mediation. There needs to be some like recovery. So it's like, find a way to kind of gamify all these little aspects of life and why not even bring it to spiritual numbers as well. 
Right. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the, um, there's like this color one that you can do with colors. Like if you're like bored one day or you just, you know, are feeling like you're doing the same thing every single day and you're needing to shake it up a little bit, just pick a color of the day and maybe it's like mustard yellow. And then you just go out, go driving or on a walk and you're like, okay, that's mustard yellow, that fire hydrant, what's the next thing? And you walk a little bit more and you're like, oh, that playground is mustard yellow. And you keep going and walking or traveling and doing these things until you're like, oh, that restaurant is yellow. Like, let's go to the restaurant. And now you're like playing with the world because the universe is going to take you somewhere that you're basically meant to be, right? You're always where you're meant to be. But you get to engage with life and the universe in a different way. And mm. that's also a really fun way to do it, especially if you're feeling like you're just getting into the, the stuck rhythm of things. Try something new. Try a different place to eat. Try a library if you haven't been to a library in a long time. Like, you never know where it could lead you. Obviously, be safe if you're playing the game. Like, you know, <laughs> don't just go into the subway and just, like, randomly, oh. oh, this is, like, the red line. And, like, go there and not know where you're going to end up at. But, you know, do so in a way that you're cautious but still open and able to try new things. No, I love that. I absolutely mm-hmm. love that because, I mean, one of my things to do daily is to like do something new. And I actually really like that because it's almost this. Uh, you know, first of all, it's doing something new. So thank you for giving yeah. me something new. <laughs> for sure. Uh, but on top of that, it, it's it's bringing in this idea of like co-creation because mm-hmm. I've kind of had this like internal battle of surrendering to the universe, but then also kind of co-creating with it. Yeah. And it's interesting because it, that that game almost perfectly highlights this where you can co-create by like hey all right spirit spirit guides spiritual entity higher self we're, we're, we're following yellow so when i walk out my door you know arrange all these things so that yellow yeah. takes me where i'm supposed to go and then just surrender to where the yellow the yellow brick road takes you <laughs> Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of um, also segment intending? No. I follow a lot of Abraham Hicks, especially in the beginning of my spiritual journey. So segment intending, as they described it, and I say they because Abraham Esther Hicks, you know, is a collective. Um, but they described it as every single day, whenever you're doing something, like let's say that you are like super stressed out, you have a lot of things to do, even if you're not stressed, but let's say you have a lot of different errands to do and you're like, oh, I have to go to the store and I hope that my coupon, you know, they're going to allow it and blah, blah, blah. And like you're getting into your head about all these things of what you hope it should be and, you know, what you hope not to experience. So you get in your car right before you do anything or even right after you wake up, which is probably going to be the best for you and say, okay, when I get to the store, not only are they going to accept my coupon, but they're going to give me more coupons. I mean, the thing I'm going to have is going to be on sale and I can use my coupons with that. And then there's going to be no traffic. And then when I get to this point and like you're just segment intending every single thing of your day and then you live the day and the results of that are so good. Like you just feel like you're living blessing upon blessing upon blessing. And even if for any reason something didn't go as expected, it's usually just like a blessing in disguise where it works out later anyway. And it allows you to kind of have a peace of mind. And then if you, especially because I'm someone, especially a lot of entrepreneurs are, but I'm someone who will create a whole large task list of what I should do for one day only. And if like I don't get to that list, then I'm like, what's going on with my life? Like, I'm not as productive as I should be. Not even true. But if there's a lot that you have to do, just pick out like the main two, maybe three things and just give the rest of it up to the universe and say, all right, you take all this other load of stuff that I cannot handle right now. And that usually really works too. So segment segment intending really is beneficial. That's interesting. I haven't like thought mm-hmm. of it in that way. And so it's almost just yeah. adding a little cherry on top of like the things I'm going to do almost. Just making sure that everything, this is maybe more so beneficial for people who have anxiety or who are chronic worriers or they think very cynically throughout the day and they want to incorporate more positive thinking. So Mm. instead of them saying, I have all these things to do today, it's like, okay, well, these are the things I need to do today, but it's all going to go really, really well. And then when you actually live it, now you're having that evidence and that proof, right? Because sometimes when we're living life and we're like, oh, I want it to go this way and it doesn't, you're like, see, like my life doesn't work this way because I'm unlucky or (laughs) I'm, you know, this, that, and the other. And you come up with all the reasons as to why life's not going to work out for you. But when you segment intend and then you have the evidence and the proof that it did work out for you, you can work on your autopilot a little bit more and you can work on your subconscious a little bit more to always pick out how things will be working for you in a positive way other than not working out for you for whatever judgmental reason you put on yourself to begin with. I'm even seeing this in, and as you were kind of going on there, it seems like you could even use this if you just have like a very routine, like morning and then afternoon and then work. Cause even I'm thinking of it in terms of like working out where 
I kind of always do similar stuff or at least I'm going there and it's like, why not just intend that something crazy is going to happen? Because if Mm -hmm. I just get into this repetitive pattern of like, I'm going to stretch and then I'm going to lift and then my body's going to be sore and then I'm going to go and do this and I'm going to shower. And it's like, it's like, okay, you kind of are almost taking out that fun element. Like there's no, you're not leaving any room for fun because it's, you've already decided, you know, exactly what's going to happen. Mm hmm. And so when you do something like that, it could be like, okay, I intend that when I work out today, I'm going to fall upon something that was completely like unplanned and super funny. Like it's going to make me laugh so hard. And then like you might end up actually seeing that and you're like, oh yeah, I, I segment intended that. And the thing is about the segment intentions is like you probably most likely forget about them, like what exactly it was because you're already in the process of doing the task or doing the thing that you need to do. And especially if it's something that you do all the time or every day, you have a routine of how it's going to go. So if something does happen that was funny and was unexpected you're gonna be like oh like that okay that was that one thing that I just asked for it in that moment you'll be like I remember segment intending this but beforehand you're just in your zone like forgetting about it and that's kind of part of the manifestation process of letting go so if you're not consciously thinking of it it's Mm. kind of like a watch pot never boils if you're not watching it it's gonna boil and if you're not consciously thinking about it it may actually start to come to you that's so cool Mm -hmm. I love that I'm gonna have to do that every morning now Actually, just kind of set <laughs> segment intent. Yeah, yeah. Especially too, like it's because I've dealt with so much like mental health issues where it's like I will wake up already anxious. Like I'll wake up out of my sleep, out of my dream, already anxious. So doing that first thing in the morning, where it's like I will have a calm and peaceful day. <laughs> like that's gonna allow me to not only just have like again that wishful thinking. But you are speaking it out into the universe, thus making that energy physical, and that's already a physical manifestation. And then you get to just watch it unravel and watch it happen. And because it was like your very first thought when you woke up, it's probably going to happen because you have a more... I almost I don't know why I wanted to call it like sticky because I was thinking like the theta brainwave state and how you just wake up and like whatever is going to be in your waking day, the first 30 minutes usually like sticks with you. That's why people who like wake up and like check their email right away, they may like be that busy bee where they're just always like constantly checking social media and doing whatever that is. But if when you wake up those first 30 minutes of the day, you're like kind of programming your mind to think of like, oh, this is how I want my day to go. This is how it's going to go. This is what I'm going to experience. And I'm going to sign on a new new client or make this amount of money, or my partner's going to be happy when they come home because they got, you know, this raise. Then that your sticky bait. This episode of Traveling to Consciousness is brought to you by Aquarius Mushrooms. And Aquarius Mushrooms creates what I can only describe as these fine art sculptures that are all one of a kind and these plush mushroom fabric sculptures. They're what I would describe as being like little trip buddies. They're perfect for anyone who has a room that is dedicated to spiritual adventures or anyone who is looking for a fine piece of art that is one of a kind. I think I said that, but one of a kind to enhance their psychedelic experience. I'm sober and I look at mine all the time and it just oozes out this creative and spiritual energy that I it's hard for me to stop looking at sometimes. And so if you are on even maybe just smoking some weed, like I can only see how this thing would open up a portal to a new world. So I highly recommend that you click the sponsors link below, scroll down where you see Aquarius mushrooms, click their website and see if any of them speak to you. Because if it does, I can only imagine how it's going to speak to you in the real world. Aquarius mushrooms, mushrooms for the new age of enlightenment. And like that is like one of the best ways to kind of manifest your day or manifest your week or manifest your month because your brain is already in a space where it's not negating anything right away. It's like, this is what's happening. We just fresh woke up. The first thing that we put into our mind, it's the first hit of endorphins that you get and it's going to stay with you. But how many times have we like woken up on the wrong foot of the bed where we're waking up and then we just rush in to do something and then the dogs are barking where the baby is crying. And then now it's 10 minutes later and we're in a rush to do whatever it is that we need to do. And the traffic's pissing us off. And it's like beforehand, the traffic would not have even gotten us this upset. You know, it's just kind of that priming. Maybe that's why I was thinking of sticky, like mm, priming your day. Priming. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've noticed that heavily with like the phone. If I pick up my phone right away, then majority of that day is going to be spent being on the phone. But if I delay picking up my phone as long as possible, I, the likelihood of me actually jumping on it decreases exponentially. Yeah. 
That happens. And I've had to work my way out of that, too, where it's like you just you have this like, especially with social media and everything. And if you are a content creator, you're always checking like how many people liked it. I just posted it like right before uh, I went to bed and yeah. you just get stuck. And it's not um, the most healthy way to live. You may be able to get away with it like a day or two in your week, but doing it every single day. And then again, it's like the whole watch pot never boils. If you want to see that success, you can't be hovering over it because you're not allowing it the time and space to grow. Yeah, that was a big thing. That's wow. Whoa. I don't know. I've heard that before, like <laughs> giving it the time and space. But for some reason, like, I don't know why that just resonated differently this time. Because mm-hmm. like, if you're constantly looking at it, you're not, you're not giving it space. Wow. Mm-mm. Why did that? <sighs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's so true, because I know I do it a lot with my podcast numbers. Like, it's funny because like Instagram and TikTok kind of like blew up crazy fast off of like I really didn't put much effort into them. And it's interesting. We're not we're not mystique level blow up. So, you know, give me a sec there. But but blew, <laughs> not, yet. not yet. Not yet. But they blew up because I kind of was just like just posting stuff I found interesting and I was just like letting go. But like with mm-hmm. my podcast, like like my podcast, like that's that if I could trade every follower of mine just to listen to every single podcast episode, like mm-hmm. that's what I would do. And so to your point, like I'm, I used to be, I'm, I'm getting a lot better now. I can tell, but obsessive over the numbers. Like I check every day, I check every numbers, like kind of refresh, refresh. But I, th- but like the last couple of days I haven't looked at all. And you know, I'm not at that point of seeing the exponential growth with it, but, but I just, I don't know why, but something just felt so resonant whenever it's like, okay, just take a step back. Me sitting there clicking refresh on this page isn't going to increase the number of people that are actually listening to it. Mm-hmm. So why put so much energy into looking at it versus just, hey, you you got your plan. You're going to upload twice, a, you know, whatever, do that. And then we'll just, we'll come back and look at it in a month or so, you know, yeah. why worry about it now? It's so hard to do that sometimes, though. It's so hard because it's just like we work on something and we work on it so hard and it takes up like every second of our day or of our life. And we just want the instant gratification. We want like as soon as we press upload or, you know, submit it somewhere on a social media platform, we want it to just take off. And that's very uncommon first. Um, Virality, it it can sometimes be easily achieved, but sometimes it's really not, especially if you're growing it into some sort of business or growing it to, you know, a dream that you have. Um, But I always take a look at every aspect of my life and I try to treat it like a plant because you don't expect to plant a seed and then water it and put a little sunlight on it. And then the next day it sprouts. Mm. You just don't. And like if I can always attune that um, like metaphor or that analogy to every area of my life, I will see that I'm actually making greater strides than I would have, you know, previously believed if I was still thinking that I could just make something sprout after a day or after a day or two. Another analogy that I've heard before, but again, it just resonates hard because you need that. You got to give it the space to grow. You got to take that step back and okay, I watered it. It's got the sunlight me staring sitting here staring at it isn't going to help the plant grow any faster mm-hmm. it comes back to your whole wash pot never boils like it will be growing and so like i'm not sure if you've done it yet but something that i had to do and sometimes i'll do it at like the end of six months or at the end of a year but i'll go back and say like okay maybe i don't feel like my channel is growing maybe i don't think i'm getting this many views or whatever instead of checking it every single day i'll go back and be like okay this month how did it do? Okay, this month, how did it do? And now I have like a span of months and I'm like, actually, it's increased by a lot for just this six months or for this year. And then you're like, okay, I got to stop being so hard on myself. But when you're in it day in, day out, and Mm -hmm. like us humans, our little tiny cute brains, God bless (laughs) us, we just don't perceive it like a fourth dimensional thing where everything's happening all at the same time. So you kind of have to just stay there vibrationally, like everything's happening at the same time. And then just, you know, say to yourself, oh, I've already had that. Like, so sometimes people, when they're affirming things like I am healthy, like I am rich, like I received like $100,000 in a month and like, or I am receiving it in a month. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I already received $100,000 in a month. 
I already did that. Because then it takes off less pressure even even more than just saying I have it currently to saying, oh, I already accomplished that. And you're tapping into that higher version of yourself that already has had it and is looking for the next goal, the next goal. And I feel like that makes me happier for some reason because I'm just like, I know that this version of me has got it. And I'm always connected to that version. So that means I got it now too, or I've had it before too. And I feel like that really can help you with the divine timing of things and the letting go of things. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think the piece of that was what you said at the beginning that I'm thinking about, which is there's a phrase which is like, when in doubt, zoom out. Mm -hmm. So like you're saying, like we, we, we tend to fixate on the little thing that's happening right now, as opposed to like taking a step back and being like, you know, I don't know how long you're making videos for, but let's say it's been a couple of years and you're like, oh, in two years, I got a million followers. Like, that's crazy. Or 1.4, I think I saw. So Mm -hmm. You know, and I even know with my podcast, like every two to three months, my the listeners double, like the downloads yeah. double. And so it's like take a step back from this individual day aspect and just look at it in the big term. Look at it over mm-hmm. a year. And it's like, okay, shit. If every two to three months I double, that's huge because that invites in the exponential growth of just like logarithmic returns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's a beautiful way to look at it as well for, and I'm sure I, we tend, I tend to talk about this in terms of like content creation, but I'm sure it's even something that people can see in their everyday life, or even you've probably seen with your business as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly why I can talk about it the way that I'm talking about it. Cause I had to go <laughs> through it, you know, I definitely had to go through it. And I feel like I definitely had, um, an interesting time with the whole content creation and everything like that. I really, I feel like people say this a lot. I did not expect the TikTok or anything to grow. And that's because ever since I was 12, I had a camera in my hand and I was always doing all these little things. And did it ever grow? No. I had another business and I wanted it to grow a lot on Instagram. And did that ever grow? Not as much as I wanted it to. So when I did the energy healing thing, I feel like it was definitely divine timing. It was another one of those hot and cold moments where the universe was like, this is for you. Um, But Yeah, I had been working on just content and videos and doing little films and things like that for so long that I feel like it just swelled up to that point of where I was on TikTok. And it was actually like, oh, I'm actually getting some more views on this and I'm actually doing this. But it wasn't just like I that was the first time I picked up a camera and it happened. You know, it it Mm. took me years of learning everything in the back end of it and being also um an actor in school and in college and in high school and being comfortable speaking in front of the camera, like it, it had so many working parts to it. So even the the seed or the plant of TikTok had to have a seed. And that seed was probably when I first had the camera at 12 years old, you know? Right, right. All of that watering, let's say, even the roots, right? If we want to bring this back to yeah. Gaia place, even growing those roots, it's it's all of those past experiences that kind of like brought you into who you are today that was able to capture these these videos that then took off and and went you know the ways that it did yeah because i mean a lot of the whole using the reiki and then having it be like a rhythmic thing and then having like you know some sort of stage or camera presence like not only was it the camera work that i did and was the acting work that i did but i was also a competitive dancer and it's like if i didn't know rhythm or if i wasn't you know in tune with like how i want things to hit on a certain beat it probably would not hit as well and so that's why i feel like my videos are so effective it's because i incorporate all these different elements of my past lives basically Well, and then I'm glad that you're also thinking about this in terms of Reiki, because have you been able or do you ever perform Reiki, let's say on your TikTok channel or on, you know, your business and how, and if you do, how would you visualize that compared to like the human body? Yeah. So because you could put Reiki into everything and use symbols for everything, um, I put symbols on every single one of my TikTok videos for the protection of people as well um, so that no one's really stumbling upon it who's like absolutely going to have a fit about it. Has it gone into the sights of other people? Yeah, but there's only so much I can do about that. Um, But I put symbols on every single one of the videos so they can find the right kind of people, the right kind of time for them. Um, 
And then for like the business, yeah, like you could definitely like have, and this is something that I teach in my Reiki training, but you can literally write whatever manifestation or goal it is that you have and you can hold it in your hands, hold it up and send Reiki to it and then just like Mm. let it be and see how that happens. And what it will do is take away and remove any blockages or transmute any energies maybe that you're putting into it and projecting into it that aren't beneficial for it and then transmute it into healing energy so that it will go easier for you or it'll come to you quicker. So I've definitely used it um, with business, with TikTok and social media. Um, but because it's already kind of ingrained in there, I don't do too much to like separately say, oh my gosh, TikTok today. Maybe I should see how it goes, <laughs> see if I can get to 2 million and I'll let you know how it works. Um, Please do. <laughs> but it's definitely something that you can kind of do in that way. There's also ways that you can um, program reiki into crystals and you can wear those crystals and it'll benefit you or benefit whatever it is that you have so um something that i've also created is like a reiki protection jar and it has salts it has black tourmaline it has baileys it has cloves and it has it's like sealed in a glass jar and you can put that anywhere you want and i often advise people to put it in their car so that they're protected while they're driving. So it's not necessarily like healing them in an aspect, but the Reiki is to protect them from getting into car crashes or if they are in a car crash, they won't be impacted so negatively by it. Mm. That was another thing I think I've seen people starting to create or putting out, which is these little containers full of spices and salt. And it's so Mm -hmm. funny because I'm sure this is some part of programming. It's interesting because I have constantly like seen it. And my first thought is like, which, like, which? Yeah, it <laughs> probably like, should be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like just, they're like, okay, these probably work at everything. But like, it's so interesting that like, I, I just, I feel like there's like a, uh, it's got to be like something societal or something programmed where I'm like, there's something, uh, I'm trying to think of like what the right word is for it. Like some sort of negative connotation that's like associated with seeing like a little jar full of, mm-hmm like herbs and spices and and then you know wrapped up with kind of like usually like a string and they're like mm-hmm. and then they put the jar on and then you know these these so i don't i don't know do you have any like what what's your like history with you know creating these little jars of spices and salts yeah so it's mainly just the well i guess I would say that it's mainly the protection jar where I have a lot of the spices. So I would say that it goes to the witches for sure to be able to use the herbs and the different elements and combine them together with a specific intention and then perhaps write a rune or a spell or do whatever it is that they need to to really activate that. Um, Because you could put a whole bunch of things into a container, but without intention or without proper practice or without, you know, something that you want it to do, it's probably not going to be very effective in pretty much anything because you didn't program it yet. Um, um, so it it never really rubbed me the wrong way how it kind of <laughs> sometimes viscerally like comes to you. Um, but I have that one protection jar. Um, and then other than that, the, the jars that I make usually contain just crystals because I'm such like a crystal child. I don't know if you've heard of like the indigo children and the rainbow children and the crystal children, but like I would be the crystal child. Um, I love crystals and I have worked with them for a long time and feel very connected to them in a very like true, authentic and genuine and divine way. So I'll make like these little bundles where it's like, okay, if you want help with abundance, I'm going to have this kind of crystal, this kind of crystal and this kind of crystal. I'm going to put it in a jar. I'm going to put Reiki in it. And then you're going to have protection or activations when it comes to your money. Um, And I do that with intuition, your spiritual gifts. I also do that with um, like happiness and joy and vitality as well. Mm. Okay. So Mm -hmm. We're we're kind of jumping around on topics here, but uh, a little bit, uh, yeah, yeah. But it's cool. I'm going to go for it because <laughs> you brought up the indigo children, the rainbow children, and the crystal children, yes. which I know we for sure have never talked about because I'm not even aware of what those are. So, mm-hmm. are you able to break that down a little bit more? Yeah. So it's been a while since I've studied up on them, but indigo children, and hopefully I'm like saying accurate information. And if I'm not, that's totally fine. Someone can definitely come and correct me. Um, but indigo children are a little bit more of like the rebels in nature. So people who kind of go against authority and ask like why like why is it got to be this way Ooh, that's so me. i find that a, that's me for yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people who are like um like screw the government or like screw the man and like let's create our own thing those are the indigo children because they have like that front line like um i don't even know what to call it like this power or this like initiation or this energy that they're able to just not care like just not care and just go against the grain and knock down things that need to be knocked down that traditionally have just been kept up for years maybe mm. it's outdated systems and programs or things like that or hierarchies right 
So that would be like the indigo children. Um, so there are a lot of them are misfits. A lot of them like the grungier types of energies in life or just they're the outcasts because they don't care about being individual. They don't care what you have to say. They only care about, you know, what they feel is right. And usually it's not anything, you know, bad. They're not like going around and saying like, screw this just for the sake of it. It's because they actually feel that it's not in alignment with where people are today or where society is today. So that would be the indigo children. Uh, you have the rainbow children, which I love. These are going to be the people who are very, they probably wear a lot of rainbows first off, or they're very colorful in nature. Um, I sense just by my experience, doesn't necessarily have to be true, but a lot of the times they have higher pitched voices or like kid-like voices. Sometimes they have si a, like sing-songy voices where everything they say has some sort of melody to them, some sort of chime, mm. and they can light up any room without ever really feeling like they have a depletion of energy. It's like they have like this constant source where it's like you see these people who can like go on camera and go dancing and go act and then go and hang out with their friends all in one day and then like they don't they get burnt out but they don't get as burnt out as somebody else would um but they're here to bring a lot of joy they're here to bring a lot of um uplifting into this world so i wouldn't say that they're necessarily like opposites of the indigo but they bring light and life and they bring lightheartedness and childlike nature to the world um and then the crystal children which is what i feel like i heavily resonate with are those who um use crystals and like they're in their power to bring alignment and balance or to focus out on a certain energy so that something really comes about in a way but it's fine-tuned it's specific it's aligned i feel like they definitely have some of the qualities of the rainbow children but they don't have like that limitless <laughs> like channel of you know energy they need their time to rest and relax but a lot of them are also projectors just how like crystals can be projectors as well um, but they're very focused on like clearing themselves, charging themselves, just like you would clear and charge or program a crystal. That's also what they have to do. So I feel like those are a lot of the light workers um, and a lot of people who want to just bring healing into the world. I wouldn't say that they're very much disrupt like disruption makers, like the indigo children at all, but they're not afraid to kind of um, correct something if they see that it needs correcting. And so a lot of people who are like those crystal children will probably be covered in the crystals mm -hmm. at all times or know a lot about them or just feel like this, like, oh my God, I can live inside of a crystal. Like you just look at it and you get lost. I feel like that's a lot of the crystal children. Interesting. And so I guess, is this just like a way to, let's say, divvy up or parse out people, like kind of like just as like a categorization type system? I mean, it may just be um, like a label that people use. I feel like because they're saying like children, I feel like it's more, um, how do I say? It? I feel like it's more like you will really tell what kind of individual that is when they're a child. You can really see it because they just wear it like on their sleeves. Um, but in terms of like, are people going around with like certifications or anything? Not necessarily. I feel like people kind of self-identify with it. And some people can maybe even claim to be, but not, you know, are not necessarily a crystal or indigo child. I have yet to this day found like a place or a person to actually say like, I know that you are this for sure. I deem you this. Mm. And like, I feel like it's something that you kind of just do pick up, but it's either like you're all for it or you're all not because you could be very outspoken and you can bear, be very opinionated but not necessarily an indigo child i feel like those specific categories if you will or types of individuals it's like their life mission and i feel like that's when you really know it's not just a personality or character trait this is what you do in your life in everything that you do whether you intend on it or not it's just how you embody in this lifetime yeah it's uh yeah again we're speaking about indigo children. I can certainly relate with that mm -hmm. notion. And it even is remind, are you familiar with human design? A bit. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. Cause that mm -hmm. it resonates there as well, where, uh, what is it? It's my profile. I think I'm a five one, which is a heretical investigator. And so mm -hmm. it's like examining systems that aren't, what is it? It's, it's kind of like my my path in terms of human design is to examine mm -hmm. systems and point out the flaws within systems and to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm not pointing out the flaws within people because that's like where mm -hmm. my my path is, is like towards systems, not people. And so it's kind of just interesting to hear you kind of break this down because I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Like another another little label I could just kind of add, you know. To right. The 
and definitely like do some more research in it and see like more in depth. Again, my education on it is not as in depth as other people's would be, but in terms of human design, I think I'm like a four one still figuring out what that means. And I'm definitely projector, which I already knew because of the way that I heal energy. I just knew that like projecting energy and having it come across in such like wide mm. amounts. I'm like, there's no doubt I'm a projector. But with that being said, that means that a lot of the times people project on me as well. And I'm like, oh, like I just found that out. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Like I'll straight up be like with this really kind hearted intention. And then like people will just like project something on me or they'll see me walk into a room and then just immediately label me as something or find me as like a intimidating or a threat. Maybe it's because of the sassiness and the way that I'm direct or whatever. But then they get to know me. And then and a lot of the times will be like, I did not know that this is who you were. And I'm like, I don't know, projector, I, things get thrown at me. And then I, I throw at other people. But at least whatever I throw, I do my best to not have some sort of judgments on it. Because when it is judgmental, you can you can see it and you can feel it. This episode of Traveling to Consciousness is brought to you by Revibe CBD. Now I know what you're thinking, another CBD product. And typically I would completely agree with you. I've gone through all my trials and tribulations with CBD products, but this CBD cream is unlike anything else. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but there's something in the technology of it that it helps absorb into your skin and actually get to the place that aches and soothes your muscles almost instantaneously. It, it's close to instant. It's probably about a five to 10 minute activation that I've noticed, but sometimes it goes a little bit quicker. And so I know it can be difficult for the find the right one. And this was my personal favorite that I found after whew, long enough. <laughs> I don't want to go back to that dark time. But I found it. It works amazing. And the creator of it is an incredible guy. So I highly recommend you click the sponsors link below. Click on the Revive CBD tab and get yours today. Revive CBD. Feel better. Live better. All premium. All natural CBD products. Oh, for sure. And that's mm -hmm. probably the best place to kind of like skirt away from, right? Is like once you start feeling that judgment and that even kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier with whenever people are kind of casting that negative energy towards you to kind of remove the judgment from it, right? And just to realize mm -hmm. like they're not doing it to you. It's just kind of like where they're at in whether it's their day or their their spiritual process or whatever it is. It, it really has nothing to specifically do with you. It's more of what energy they're embodying at that time. Yeah. And you'll see it when you're in conversation with them. Like the second that you start to believe what somebody else says about you, the more power they have, the more energy they have. And especially um, if they have an audience around them, they can easily influence that audience. But if they come at you and you're neutral or you know how to pop it, but in a way that it's not throwing anything back at them, you'll notice that especially when it comes to other people, because other people having the audience would be a really good indicator of how the energy is going in a room because they're just the bystanders mm. of it. They're getting the response and the reactions from it they'll be like oh yeah because at first they'll be like oh yeah they'll side with like maybe the aggressor or someone who has the the louder voice in the room but the second you neutralize it you see the shift of oh and then like all the audience <laughs> is like okay and now they're like listening so it's just interesting how that works and if you're able to kind of not soak up what someone is giving you and it takes a lot it takes a lot of different elements to be able to do that um but if you don't allow yourself to absorb what someone's giving you and you stay sturdy in who you are and balanced in who you are and grounded in who you are, you basically have like the best seat in the house. You have like the vantage point because what they try to affect you and you weren't affected now what? It's beautiful. That mm -hmm. that that feeling of like being able to sit behind the uh the best uh phrase I've ever heard for it is like the uh, silent observer where you're mm -hmm. sitting behind those thoughts and you're able to just see outward. It's like, oh he said that thing. It made my body feel this way. It's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. like, cool. Like, what are we going to do about that? How's that going to play out? You know, you're just yeah. kind of seeing how it flows and jives. Absolutely. But that's why it's like so important to have that strong aura because that aura is going to be your energy field. It's all the thoughts and emotions that you have. And if it's something that's really strong and super extended out of you, you're not really going to be impacted as much or you're not going to have people uh, drain your energy as much because with what we're saying, there's definitely people who are energy vampires and mm -hmm. that power and that energy that they get may not stop at just trying to get the audience's approval or try to just throw something at you and get it off themselves. It could be that they're throwing something 
something off of themselves at you and then you absorb it and they're like, okay, well, how much can you take? And then they're releasing it all onto you and guess what? They feel a lot better. And that's how energy vampires drain your energy, but you will never be subject or, you know, you will never be an energy vir- an energy vampire victim if you have that strong aura and it's super important that you do have that. And let's let's dive into that a little bit more because I know mm-hmm. a lot of the videos that I've seen that you've put out more recently and I've most of mm-hmm. them I've seen is it all about aura cleansing or aura protection. Yeah. So what let me see here. I'm kind of curious like what you do and also I guess if you could include in your answer if like you would recommend that to other people of what you would do or if like is does it differ between persons? Like, should I do something different than you? Or is there like a generic thing that everyone can do to clear and protect their auras? Generic thing that everyone can do for the most effective way to help um, strengthen their aura and protect their energy. Are there different ways that you can do it? Absolutely. But the most generic way is having the skin to earth contact, mm. skin to earth contact, because like we mentioned earlier, Gaia, Earth, nature has the complete capacity to take in everything that imbalances us or impacts us negatively. And as we detox into her, she's then aligning us with everything that we do need. Just as we work and breathe synergistically, where we are eliminating the CO2 from our lungs and the plants are absorbing it and then giving us the oxygen and we take that in, that's exactly what happens on an energetic level with whatever balances or imbalances it is that we have. So whether it's grounding where you're putting your feet on the ground um, and especially too, if people are doing grounding and they're not necessarily receiving the benefits of it, I would say do it... um, like with mud, have a little bit more of like that water in the dirt because it's going to enhance the electrical connectivity of the energetic exchange. And so it's going to work a little bit better. And then also, if not just your feet, put your hands and your feet at the same time. And this is all coming from um, my shaman apprenticeship. So it's not anything that I created or anything like that. Um, But you having that earth to skin contact for at least 20 minutes every single day and hopefully more because the 20 minutes is just like a bare minimum. If you have that every single day, what happens is that it heals you first from the root. If your root is healed and aligned and everything's detoxed, so is your sacral, so is your solar plexus, and then up and on into your crown. And then that's when you're in full alignment. And as you're planting those metaphysical energetic roots into the ground, what happens up here is your antennas of your crown start to spread open. And look for those connections. And now you have more of those divine thoughts. Now your intuition is stronger and reliable. Now you have, you know, um, like clear sight, clear vision. Maybe you're having all the clear abilities or you're just feeling more psychic. You're feeling more in tune with everything else. But, you know, what happens in modern day society is that we have the rubber soled shoes and we have the um, apartment buildings that are 20 stories high and we don't have that connection to earth as much anymore. If we do, we're like, yeah, I took a walk, but you took a walk on concrete. You took a walk on the pavement. You didn't take your shoes off and actually integrate with the earth. So you can do that even with a tree. You can do that with the plants that you have in your home. And one of the uh, ways that I have been passing along through my shaman is using stones and using rocks because you can do the same exact thing. And there is a little bit of a process when you do that. Um, You would go, you would go into nature and you kind of like forage for these rocks and then ask the rock, ask Mother Gaia, like, hey, I'm looking for rocks today. Please show me like the best ones for me. I actually have a rock right here. I can show you too. But you'd go and you'd ask for permission. So you could take the rock and say, rock. And like, if it sounds silly to do this, then you're not woo enough for me, but go <laughs> ahead and take the rock and ask permission because guess what? The rocks in nature have consent too. So it's not going to just take our energy just because we're like, let's give you my energy and all of it's going to be bad. Like, no, like be gentle, be courteous. Say, hey, do you consent to me detoxing and receiving my energy? And then if it's a yes, you'll feel it right away. If it's a no, you're going to feel that right away too. It's going to definitely be like a contracting kind of energy or it won't give you sort of any Mm. response at all um so you take it you can rinse it underwater and grab two of them and you can put them in your socks and having that skin to earth contact push everything create little antennas from your feet and so they can integrate and interlock with the rock after 20 minutes or so hopefully no technology so no apple watch on you no metals on you crystal jewelry is fine you could watch tv but no laptop maybe no phone in your hand completely like techless do that exchange and then after the 20 minutes, you can take it and you can bury it. And now it's 
you know, doing the grounding for you and then it's ready. Or you can do a little bit of a smoke cleanse. You can take some Florida water, spray it on there, and then it's good for the next time. This seems like a, a lot of energy. Like when <clears throat> thinking about back when we were talking about food and now kind of with the grounding, how much time do you think you do a day in regards to manipulating, let's say, the energy around you or clearing your aura or clearing like your own food? It has been my lifestyle. <laughs> it's, it's just it's everything. every part of me. It's every part of me. And I think it's super important that it is every part of me because I'm working with so many people. And who am mm. I to say cleanse your energy and do all this if I'm not doing it? Right. And who am I to say, oh, I'm a great Reiki healer. I'm a great energy healer. And then I'm not clearing my own stuff and I'm coming to a session. I always take a look at me as an energy healer, as someone in the medical field. If someone's going into your energy and removing something, it's kind of the same thing as you going into surgery. And what do the surgeons have to do? They have to make sure they're wearing certain scrubs. They have to wash their hands. They have a whole process of what they do before and after to cleanse themselves and cleanse the room. And so you have to do that the same as an energy healer. And the best way to do that is just always make sure that you're cleansing your own stuff. Because again, with a weekend aura, if you're not you know, prone to always grounding or clearing your energy, you are more impacted by everything that's going on around you, even if you're just going outside and then coming right back in. Going to the grocery store, a whole bunch of energy. Going to the mall, a whole bunch of energy. Coming right back in and then to do a session and not clear yourself beforehand. So it's something that's constant and you want to make sure that you know you have your protections, whether that is maybe veiling where you have like your scarf or your headband where you're protecting your crown, you're protecting your third eye. Super helpful for people who are going into like concerts or raves or um, any environment where it's like a work conference and there's just like too much energy where you get headaches or you get overly stimulated. Have a veil on. Mm. Um but yeah, it's definitely a part of my lifestyle. So as much as, you know, how much time do I spend in my day? Like if I'm not just like sitting down watching TV and I do watch a lot of TV, it'd probably be close to like 12 hours in total because it's in every sort of part. And if we even want to include like the crystals that I'm wearing, then that's going to be almost 24 seven. So it's interesting you talk about the covering of the head because I there's a friend of mine. He's actually a TikToker as well. I'm not sure if you've heard of Vincent King Cash's Kane. I don't think so. No, he, I might have to see a face though. Uh, he's he's African American. He lives up in Toronto. I guess I don't know why that would help you, but <laughs> um, I mean, hey, descriptors yeah. try to get the juices flowing. Well, but so he always wears like a, uh, I guess technically it's like a do rag almost, but he wears it mm -hmm. because of energetically, like exactly what you're saying, where you know mm -hmm. he feels like if he doesn't wear it, then energy can kind of come in and like kind of take advantage of like his I, I don't know going through his hair and stuff and and mm -hmm. so I find it fascinating that you're kind of bringing this up as well because he also highlighted that importance of you know I guess protecting his head in regards to this yeah I mean if you're very sensitive even if you're not but I find that people who are more sensitive can definitely benefit from a practice like that where you're going about your day doing something or even if you were like maybe on a podcast where it's going to be seen by a whole bunch of people you don't know what those people are going to be sending you mm. you know what I mean so and especially I do a lot of protection work when it comes to the videos that I produce as well to make sure that my energy is cut off it's just an imprint so whatever people see on social media any video that I provide my energy is cut off because if someone sees it and they don't like it they don't think that you know what I'm doing is real or whatever and I'm like scamming people then that energy that they're sending me is not gonna necessarily get to me at all so the veiling is super important um crystals can really help too like any um Black crystals are really good for protection. Amethyst is really good for protection. Rose quartz is actually really good for protection as well because um, rose quartz will actually transmute it on the spot and turn it into something else on the spot. So there's many different ways in which you can protect your energy. Um, but one of the most generic and easiest ways that you can do it is just getting in tune and communing with Mother Nature. So then going back to Mother Nature, I have I recently bought like a grounding mat for my bed where you like plug yeah. it into the wall. What's do you have mm -hmm. an opinion on if those are beneficial, if that's like legit or Yeah, I want to get one. You want to get like, one? Like for sure. Yeah, for sure. So what does yours include? Is it like the copper? Does it have crystals in there? Oh, I do not know the depth of that question. I would have to look it up. I just know that it's just a black mat and then you kind of just plug a little wire into like the ground output of like the electricity. Um so mm -hmm. that is in the ground essentially and then you know, I sleep on it and I, I definitely felt like a little different like the first night. And then after that, mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've, I've definitely feel like I've slept a lot more, but, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, to me, it feels, it feels legit, but I was just curious if you had kind of an experience yeah. with that. 
There's definitely different ones. Some have like the copper to really help with the electromagnetic um, conductivity of it. But then there's one with the crystals that I know about, like amethyst, rose quartz, black tourmaline is a really um, common one as well. But yeah, I've heard a lot of really good like benefits and health benefits that can happen by laying on one of those. Of course, me, I'm just like with my rocks until I decide to like get the one for me. But there's also different crystals that help with the EMF Um radiation and everything like that and okay. there's things that like little crystal things that you just glue onto the back of your phone to help protect you from you know everything that's coming off of your technology as well so there's definitely different things there's wands that people have i forget what they call them but i'm just gonna say it's like an emf wand but it really helps and you pass it over their whole entire body and i've seen ones where it's like a whole copper rod and they have all these different crystals in between with like the coil wire and in a session they will just pass it over you and like it just like sucks it all out so I have a actually on the back of my phone and a necklace. I'll kind of show you it. It's just like this little uh, this little thing. They're actually mm -hmm. one of the sponsors of the podcast. Uh, shout out Ross Newkirk, Conscious Technologies. Uh, <laughs> he created and he, I did a podcast episode with him. If anyone's curious, episode zero three four. He like somehow he like uses the astral realm in order to mm -hmm. like create inventions. And I guess he has like well over like 200 patents on inventions. And wow. he's even gotten to a point where he doesn't need to test his inventions at all. He just like uses the astral plane, creates them. And then like on his first try, will actually create whatever the invention is. <laughs> and so this thing that I have on my phone and the necklace I have is actually an EMF harmonizer. So, mm -hmm. you know, from a technological standpoint, and maybe you already know this, but I'll just say it for anyone who maybe doesn't is that the way that the electromagnetic electromagnetic frequency of like our heart and earth spin is like we'll say it's like to the left but the way that like technology spins is to the right and so what his technology does is actually harmonizes it so it takes the electromagnetic frequency of like your phone your wi-fi he even has like little units that he'll place inside your house and it'll mm -hmm. literally harmonize the entire environment so that it's spinning the same way as nature that's super cool. I've never heard of that before. And I'd almost want to understand what their human design is to understand how they're able to receive that information and then generate it. That seems like a manifesting generator, but I wouldn't know 100% unless, of course, we ask them. But that's interesting. And to work with the astral plane in that way, super, super cool. Super. And to have that knowing of that confidence, you know, to be able to say, oh, I seen this and like I, I felt it and I understand the inner workings of it. Let's create it. And boom, it's like a hit. That's that's more than just talent. That's a gift. It's wild. It's really. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're interested, definitely check out that podcast yourself. But for sure, and I even. I mean, even to you, I recommend that that device. I mean, because it's like, it's crazy. I mean, he's even he's even tested it out where people have like little medallions that they'll spin, and mm -hmm. they've like, and the point of it was to like highlight this electromagnetic field. And they put it over top of his phone and it like wasn't spinning. And they're like, what the fuck's going on? Like my, my test is broken. And then he's like, oh, wait, I have like this thing on my case. Like that actually is supposed to prevent this crystal from doing this. And they're like, oh, okay, <laughs> shit. Like <laughs> can't show you. I love this. that. Yeah. Right. So you're talking about like a pendulum, right? Like a little pendulum that like will spin. Yeah. Or like you can. Yeah. It's like a pendulum or something. I, it might've been like a, a personal pendulum, but they were like trying to get it so that they could highlight that the way that it would spin would be incorrect but then since he had his technology on it it would just mm -hmm. like the pendulum wouldn't spin at all and they're like okay something's yeah. wrong here and he's like oh yeah you know this super cool this. technology that i've got so <laughs> that's good marketing yeah right that's good marketing right there yeah. for sure yeah it's super cool dude too and yeah just wild because he was talking about how there's like all these different geometries that he uses in it and then uh some minerals like shungite which is like this meteor that mm -hmm. landed in russia and then he like mixes gold with it so it really has that element of the, the the crystals and the geometry that he uses to, you know, harmonize the EMF around us. Yeah, that's brilliant. I would love to le learn more. I'm surprised you had that episode number off the top of your head, too. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, zero, zero, three, four. I'm like, whoa, like, <laughs> how do you remember that? There's some of them that stick in there and it's it's weird. I I mean, I've, I think I've, I've like lost it a little bit once I got over like 60. Mm -hmm. uh, but like people will be like, oh, yeah, you were talking to so and so and they'll start describing it and I'll be like, oh, this person, this episode. And so I, it's still in there somewhere with some people, but I think I'm starting to lose it a little bit the higher the numbers get. 
Yeah. No, that's a good memory though. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then we have confirmed, Oh, but then you were saying that you're trying to find a grounding mat that has crystals and copper in it. You don't want to just stick with one or the other. I mean, that's the ones that I've seen so far. And I like the incorporation of multiple things because there's definitely elements that enhance other elements. Mm. So with the copper, I know it's like the electrical conduction of it all. And so I already have even like like a crystal water bottle that has like the amethyst and the rose quartz and we have it together. And even, for example, like clear quartz, that's going to help amplify things as well. So if you have a clear quartz with basically almost any other stone or crystal, it's going to amplify the benefits of that. So using a couple different elements would probably be like the best or something that I would look um forward to the most gotcha mm -hmm. i guess that makes a lot of sense too is that if you have these different elements or more elements to help clear more energies it would make sense as opposed to just okay cool it's connected you're getting the ground but then if you want to actually amplify it or use it in a certain way then it would like even be more beneficial in those regards yeah. And of course, because I'm me, I would probably say like, okay, Rose Quartz, you're going to be programming me for this. Like as mm. you're going to be grounding me, but you're also going to be programming me for this. So it's also activated. Like maybe if I was going through like a really intense like heartbreak or like some grief or something and I wanted to program the Rose Quartz to help the heart space, but I wanted everything else for grounding in general, I could just, you know, work at it from like two different ways or two different angles. Well, then this is interesting too, because, and I'm thinking about earlier in this conversation, whenever you were talking about how you can push certain energies into certain objects, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have rose quartz and you push a certain energy into it, is that rose quartz then cemented with that energy or are you able to then clear out, like say you're doing it with grief, right? You program it to help align you out of the frequency of grief or help you process mm -hmm. it. But then, you know, a couple of days goes by, you're no longer in grief, but you still have this rose quartz. Are you able to reprogram that rose quartz to a different frequency? Definitely. You just need to cleanse it and then charge it and then program it again. So the cleansing portion, that could be done uh, different ways. So you could do that with some Florida water. I will say, though, that not all crystals work well with water. So you just want to make sure usually any of the crystals that end in it, you probably don't want to put under water. So like cal calcite, fluorite, shungite, uh, lipotolite, things like that. But you can take that crystal, that rose quartz with the energy because it basically does the same thing like it harmonizes, right? And so it may absorb. There are some crystals that are better at absorbing and then there are some crystals that are better at projecting. Um, but it would harmonize with that frequency and you'll notice it once the rose quartz, you don't feel the effects of it anymore. Or maybe you're having like it was working for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and now you're just not feeling the benefits. It's probably time for it to be cleansed. So again, you can do it with um, possibly Florida water. You can do it with a bit of a smoke cleanse. You could do um, burying it under the ground. Uh, sometimes rainwater also really helps or water from like a moving like creek or waterfall river or something like that. Um, and then you'll feel it like it's just like it wipes off literally like a whiteboard. It doesn't take that much time at all. Um, sometimes the crystals can also like break and that's how you probably know that it's uh, done doing its job mm -hmm. for you. Um, sometimes if I'm with someone and I have rose quartz and they're going through something and I'm talking and I'm talking and like let's say that it like falls off of my bracelet and hits the ground and falls into, into two pieces. I'm like, oh, this was meant for you. And I'll just go ahead and gift them one half of my rose quartz because – if it's split, it's probably for a very significant reason. And then I'll teach them how to like cleanse, charge, and program it. So basically that would be the cleansing process when you don't really feel like it's working out for you as much, or maybe it even broke. And if it broke in half and it's just by myself, I'll probably just bury it and just have it be with mother nature for the time being. Um, you could probably do crafts with it too, put it into some sort of like craft if you need to. Then the whole charging is going to be either in the sunlight or the moonlight. Uh, definitely be careful. Again, you're going to want to do research on every crystal that you have because if you leave it too uh, long into the sunlight, it could discolor or change the chemicals in it as well. Um, but then the moonlight. And you can do that really on any sort of day of the week. But the more powerful um, times to do it would be the full moons and the new moons. And you can either leave it by your windowsill to charge and get the energy. And if it's a rose quartz, it may be better to do it with the moon because the moon we know it has a lot to deal with um, relationships, influence, um, intuition, things like that. And with the rose quartz being a very emotional kind of stone, that could really 
use the the moon's medicine a lot more and then you can leave it outside if you need to and then after that you can then program it so you can hold it in your hands sometimes i like to blow three times on the crystal even the stone if i'm you know programming my stone for something um but you can blow your intention into it get it integrated with your energy again and program it for something specific you can just say you know what do whatever it is that you feel i need you don't always have to know exactly what you need because a lot of the times we don't know what we need um but if you are going through maybe like postpartum rose quartz is great for that if you're looking to find new love rose quartz is great for that grief loss heartbreak good for that also self-love unconditional love and understanding it's going to be great for that too specifically for the rose quartz so you talked again about burying your things and i can only imagine that your backyard just has all these different holes (laughs) just laid out throughout it (laughs) so for me i i can't wait for the day that that is absolutely true i live in a high-rise apartment right now so what i do is i have um I like went to Trader Joe's and I got like this thing for like growing sunflowers. So it's basically just like a canister of dirt. And that's where I'll just go ahead and ground my stuff too. So your plants will also take the energy as well. So mm. if anyone has house plants or something like that, they can definitely use the um, dirt from that and go ahead and plant it under there too. I'd also, <laughs> that's kind of be funny. You'll just have all these like different holes in your backyard. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> One day I would like to stick on the, cracking a little bit more because I, Mm -hmm. whenever you said that, I realized that I had a piece of quartz. I I think it's just white. So again, I'm very Mm -hmm. basic. Probably clear quartz. Clear quartz. Okay. We'll we'll go with it. I'm very basic (laughs) entry level with my crystal knowledge. So go easy on me. Well, (laughs) so I use, when did I use, I I would keep it like near my bed because I remember reading that it would help with like dreams and all that stuff. And I wish I could remember when it happened, but I know that it did crack in half and like i think i lost the bottom half of it but i know there's like this clear cut through the center of it and it's just you know the way it is so i'm interested now based on this like understanding is it is it kind of for me to figure out what it means that it cracked or are you kind of saying that maybe my time is done with that or do i need to remove some energy from it like maybe it's over energized like what what does that kind of symbolize to you that this piece of clear quartz like basically split in half Mm -hmm. did you say it was after um a nightmare or did you say something in regards to sleep definitely because i would keep it near my bed and so i know Mm -hmm. i've used it with like dreams or you know something something in the dream realm of whether i'm using that to increase my dream perception or whatnot i'm not very consistent with it so i'm not Mm -hmm. very accurate in this regard but i know it would be something related to dreams or sleeping for sure. For sure. Well, just know that even if you did program it for something and like, let's say you're not always like actively using it, it's still doing something. It still has some sort of effect or impact. So even if it was just in your bedroom, whatever kind of energies that were going on there and if it was amplifying it, maybe it was like, hey, whatever's going on in the bedroom, let's not amplify it. Like, um, Mm. Not that this was you because I don't know your story, but like let's say you had a significant other and for some reason there was a whole week where you guys would lie in bed together but then have an argument. The rose or the clear quartz may not want to keep amplifying that energy and so it could just be breaking and that would hopefully show you, hey, maybe take this crystal out of the room or it's time to cleanse or it's time for you guys to stop fighting or something like that. Um, But It is kind of up to you to decide what it means and use your own, of course, discernment. You can always ask your higher self and you could also just ask the crystal. Crystals are more than happy to talk to you. Nature in general is more than happy to talk to you. So whether you actually have a clear ability or not, if you're able to just tune in and energetically say, okay, I know I'm going to receive information from this crystal it will come. It can come in a message in terms of a sentence. It can come into like a visualization, a picture. And if you really don't know and it's really hard for you and you're someone who's a little bit more physical or logical in nature, maybe just holding it in your left hand so that you can receive the energy and writing with your right hand Mm. every like thought that you're getting while you're holding it and ask it the question, hey, like, why did you break? What do you want me to do with you now? It's going to flow. Like it's definitely going to flow. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and that's fascinating too because I know I'm my very first Claire ability that let's say came online, quote unquote, was Claire audience, and so I mm-hmm. experienced. I actually had one TikTok video that went pretty viral with me actually like standing up to a tree and like basically putting my hands on it, talking with it, which is super trippy. And it might sound like I'm insane by saying this, but fuck it. Not at all. I, 
the trees that I've talked to, you're definitely in the right place. <laughs> definitely. And then they all have like different personalities too that I've realized, which it's, yeah. it trips me the fuck out, you know, and they'll, it, that's, that's a whole nother thing. So I do find it interesting that you're even leveraging this onto crystals as well. And I assume you could also do this with like rocks or any sort of, you know, fabric of being or like a chair or fuck like this could go so deep with just asking like what do you want me to do with because there's a chair actually that's sitting right beside me right now that i haven't really moved around or done with and it's like maybe there's an element of actually asking it like where i, I was gonna say did you ask no. what it wants to do where <laughs> no. it wants to be no, i'm just getting this download now. i'm just getting this download For right sure. now so okay. i find that very fascinating i really like that idea because someone else even proposed like talking to gods and like goddesses like you can actually channel that specific energy and that that was right. like a huge breakthrough for me as well but now it's like Oh, you can do that with chairs. Inanimate objects. Yeah, yeah. houses. <laughs> Fuck. Mm -hmm. Man, my mind's going crazy with the shit that I could talk to you right now. Honest. And it, it, it's crazy because a lot of times people just don't um, realize how they're treat, treating certain things or the energy that a certain thing has. And especially when it comes to like plants, like if your plants are dying and you don't know what's going on, like ask the plant like, hey, and sometimes it's like, hey, I'm actually by this outlet and I can't handle all the electricity mm. needs to be somewhere else. And so by you, again, interacting with life, life is going to interact with you back. Oh, that's very well put. Mm -hmm. And a question that I actually haven't been asking people recently, but I do want to get back mm -hmm. to asking it. What was the very first thing that you wanted to be whenever you grew up? Very first? Uh, probably famous <laughs> in some sort of way. Probably some Paris sort Hilton. of actress. <laughs> like, what you like say? Like the Paris Hilton approach, just famous for being famous. Right. Famous for being famous. Oh, we, we stand Paris too. She's such a good role model and influencer and businesswoman. Um, but it was definitely probably that. I remember um, my mom literally still has the home videos of me where she would have like this little trunk basically and you'd open the trunk and it has all these different costumes and she would have her little like 1990s camcorder and then I'm like in a ballerina outfit and I'm like doing something for like five seconds and I'm like I'm gonna be a cat and then she's like okay and then you see the next frame of like the camcorder thing and it's like I'm a cat and it's just like I always I guess wanted to maybe perform in some sort of way or maybe it just had the comfort to do that it was probably just me wanting to play different characters mm -hmm. and embody different things as obviously when you're a human you're embodying a character but sometimes we feel like we're only limited to just one i feel like maybe when i was little i was like let's embody all these different kinds of things and i was into dance when i was little too but i didn't actually get into dance until i was like a teenager and then when i did that also like really resonated so at that point i was like i want to be a dancer but you know things <laughs> change but whatever it is that you feel like you want want to do when you're little I feel like it's still it holds on to you in a certain way where even if it's just a hobby it's still in your life oh for sure and I mean even mm -hmm. I guess bringing that to now do you feel like at 1.4 million followers do you feel like that grants you being quote-unquote famous a little bit and not in a way that has any sort of negative connotation or very egotistical connotation in a way where it's like I'm known for something that I love to do and I feel like that mm. just makes you famous in general. Um, sometimes, depending on the person, it might take a certain number to get you there. But I feel like just being recognized for what I do and having people benefit from it very positively, I was like, that's famous for me. Like, that, that's good enough for me. Even when I was, like, in high school and I was in, like, the plays or in the musicals, like, being on stage, I was like, yes, I'm doing what I'm, like, supposed to be doing. Like, I feel like the most famous person ever or doing a talent show. I'm the most famous person ever right now. It's just, like, I think it's something that you have to kind of give yourself um, because fame, I guess, could, co could go in your mind as many different things. It could be a very positive thing. It could be a not so positive thing. But for me, I think the way that I interpret fame is just being known um, for doing something that I love. And then it affects people in a really good way. Mm. I like that. I like that description okay. of it. Because mm -hmm. it's something that I've always kind of like, kind of like found interesting, right? Is, is it seems like that, that maybe I'm projecting that, but there's a pinnacle of of being one to be well known right have an admiration mm -hmm. of millions of people whatever it is but at some level right there's like a absolution of absolution i don't even know if that's a real word absolution maybe is the word i'm looking for uh mm -hmm. <laughs> of like personal fulfillment because then it's like okay i'll just have the validation from other people in order to mm -hmm. have this bestowed and i i feel like that might be where you were going with this negative connotation aspect 
but even more so it's like at what level do you quote unquote become famous because it feels to me as like there's always different levels there's different levels to all this stuff and so you know being 1.4 million i assume you're probably one of the more famous for this word asmr slash reiki healers in the space and I, i guess that also invites the question of like at what level does it become quote unquote famous? Like, are you, like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's only so many people in the world that are speak English and listen and watch ASMR first slash Reiki videos. So like mm-hmm. there has to be like this. I mean, I feel like that's a scarcity mindset if I were to say that. So there has to be, I don't know. I mean, there's a mm, fuck. I can't get around it. I want to say there has to be a limitation on how many people there are, but if you're fully fulfilling your purpose and you're going to be creating more along the way. Yeah. I feel like, again, it kind of goes back to whatever you define it as. I mean, like when you're little and someone hands you a hundred dollar bill, I'm rich. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Are you really rich? Depends on who you ask. If you ask any of your peers that, you know, is a five-year-old, 10-year-old, you're freaking rich, dude. So it's like, it depends. There's people who, again, maybe are like teenagers and they got 100 hits on their YouTube video. I'm famous. Mm. It's just famous is really, I think, what you make it out to be. Um, Maybe I feel, maybe I have a bit of a privilege saying that just because I have the 1.4 million. But at the end of the day, like, and God forbid, and knock on wood, even though I have all my videos saved, so I'd be fine. But like, if that went away, am I not famous? You know, if TikTok decided to to delete my account, am I not famous? Like Mm. giving whatever you define as fame to like whatever validates that for you outside of yourself will always be um, wavering. It'll always be wavering. So if other people validate your fame, that is just contingent on them. Like it depends on them. And I feel like if you're someone who's confident in what you do, whatever fame is to you, whatever riches is is to you, like that all depends on your own confidence and um, how you see it in general and your perspective in general. I really like that because it kind of brings in this world of relativity into Mm -hmm. it. Because I was at, I think it was a Christmas party and there was one girl who was like, uh, it was like a neighborhood Christmas party and one girl who was like, oh, like, you know, what do you do? Um, What are you doing now? And I was like, oh, I'm a podcast host. And without any other context whatsoever, she was like, oh, so you're like famous. I was like, I, I don't know. Internally, I was like, I don't think it's official yet, but (laughs) I was like, I don't think it's official yet, but it's on the way. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But it's, it's fascinating to your point. Cause even like, I look at my Instagram, it's like 110, 118,000 followers or something. And I'm sure for some people that's considered famous. Like I looked up websites and it's like considered a macro influencer. But to me, I'm kind of just like, is it though? Like it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like there isn't that charge of it, of it having that gravi, graviose, like that grab. See, I get really weird with words sometimes, but this like grandiose, grandiose, very yeah, close, very close. Yeah. I, I got to fail a little bit sometimes with words. It doesn't have like that <laughs> grandiose charge or feeling that it seems like other people place on it at times. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. And I limit that so much. Like people will, my friends are like the biggest ones to be like, she's famous. Mm -hmm. Like they just like love to throw it out there for me. And I love them for that because I am such an attention person. I mean, did you hear that I was an actor? (laughs) Like I love to be on stage. I like the attention. (laughs) But like, I won't, I won't say that. If someone asks me what I do, I say, oh, I'm a content, you know, I'm a Reiki uh, healer. I'm an energy healer, but I also am in content creation and I'll leave it at that. And then there's like the pause and then my friend's like, and she's famous. And like, she'll, they'll, they'll like add in all these things. And then they'll, and I don't know why, but then they always ask me, oh, are you? And then I'm just like, I have a large following. Yes. And I just always say it, not in a way to downgrade what it is, but everyone has their own connotation of what that could mean and i feel like it is that invisible like air of something where they think like oh you have this amount of followers you are this and your life is this no that's what you think it is that's what people maybe have portrayed it out to be Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it's like it's it's not necessarily smoke and mirrors but there's a little bit of it that is i mean it's not necessarily tangible you can't like hold fame in your hand so how are you supposed to like quantify it i guess and measure it in that way so whenever people are like oh like they said that you're you know famous whatever and then you know that well they're like well how many do you have and then when it comes to the point where i'm just telling them the metric i can't 
lower it or I can't neutralize it anymore because Million is a very good um it's I call it like a little throne. Like it's a good place to sit at. You know what I mean? It's nice, but it's a milestone. It's not like I'm, it's like a milestone. It's a milestone for sure. So I'm always gonna love that I've hit that milestone, but I'm not gonna be like, oh yes, like this is who I am now. Right. Like I'm just the same person. So well, I think that's beautiful fine. too, right? Like that's kind of where you want to be once you hit these certain things of hitting that next milestone is great, right? 10K, 100K, a million. But you still want to keep that core same person who you are. And I think mm -hmm. that's something that luckily I think I realized earlier. It sounds like you realized it at some point as well, which is like to not lose yourself along the way. Like, are, are you really willing mm -hmm. to sacrifice who you are to get an like a number on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. whether it's financial, whether it's followers? And it's like, if you're not enjoying that process, is it really worth it? Is it really worth getting right. to that end goal? Mm -hmm. And I think it also comes down to like how you're treating other people. Mm. Like if you think that you deserve a certain sort of something for you being known, like that also I think kind of goes into it where it's like you don't want to lose yourself in that way because what happens like the second that, you know, you have this whole air about you and then someone doesn't know who you are, then you have this ego thing where you're like, how do you not know who I am? Or you should know who I am. And you just can't get away with treating people um, a not nice way because you think so, not that you think so highly of yourself that it's a bad thing, but you're thinking so highly of yourself in terms of like you're comparing how right. good you feel about yourself to how you should be treating this person. And I think there's a huge thing in here as well of people having their own strengths and weaknesses and being able to understand and I mean, it even comes back to like, okay, what, where are we placing value in strengths versus weaknesses, right? Where, you know, we see certain things and think it's, you know, we perceive it as being terrible or in this case, perceive it as being good. But in reality, like it's a huge responsibility, right? It's a huge responsibility mm -hmm. to be ever have that many people. And like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's not just, I assume at some level, <sighs> It's not just all great, right? And it's, this might kind of mm -hmm. go back to what you were saying with smoke and mirrors, where it's like, yeah, but it's a it's a million people. Like that's, and I'm sure that's even hard for you to conceptualize of like how many people that truly is. Where mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I think I'm just like ranting. It feels like I'm just word vomiting right now. <laughs> no, but it makes sense because I've had to like go through that whole process of internalizing everything that you were just saying especially when it came to the live streams where it's like i'm healing people and like you'll mm -hmm. see this little number at the top of the screen on a tiktok live stream that tells you how many people are like actively watching but it doesn't even account for all the people who are like watching you who haven't clicked it only for the people who have clicked it so there could be a whole bunch of other people watching you that it doesn't have the metric for and you'll get off of like a 45 minute live stream and then you'll see the actual metrics of how many accounts actually saw you and then it's just like even if it was just for a second like i healed thousands of people in this hour of time like i've touched these many lives no matter how big or how small like that i have to sit literally at the end of every live stream i have to sit with that and like not take it for granted mm. and like sit with the fact that like i'm doing what I know my mission is and not getting in the whole like hamster wheel of like, okay, just getting off and like it was nothing and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like there are other people who may have that luxury, like maybe people who are just really for entertainment and maybe they're not even trying to grow their numbers and it's like whatever they have, okay, and they log off and they go about their day. But for me, it's like I've impacted it. Like I have to sit here. I have to absorb that I've like impacted all these people. And I'm like, okay, now go cleanse. I'm like, that was a lot of people. <laughs> Let me go cleanse myself, you know? Well, it seems so. It makes sense though with all those people. Well, and it seems like also the nature of your work being that you're doing cleansing, being that you can see the energy that you're putting out as a healing energy, I'm sure that also has like a deeper impact as opposed to someone who's maybe just playing a video game and just like, okay, I'm entertaining people. Like mm -hmm. the energy of just entertaining people is completely different than the energy of, okay, I just healed a trauma within 500, within a thousand people. Like that's mm -hmm. seems like completely different ball games to me. Mm hmm. It definitely is. And it's something that doesn't always feel like real. And like when you're in front of the camera or when I'm in front of the camera, it's always just like, OK, like there is a layer of performance because I need to make sure that things are running smoothly. But then when it gets to the actual healing part, I can kind of just like let that layer, you know, 
disappear a little bit and fall out to where I'm actually like, okay, for people who are seriously tuned in and who've already consented and who like are energetically ready to like, let's really get to like the bottom of this. And then that's when you make those genuine connections. And Mm. that's just good for your life in general. It's good for business, which is also good for life in general. Um, But it's really important, I think, when you're in that kind of community of energy healing or even giving like a psychic reading or a tarot reading or anything that you're actually connecting with these people on a real level because they can smell it if you're not. If you're really not doing it authentically, they'll smell it and it's not it's not good um, perception for you in general. You can't really control all the perceptions that people are going to have of you, but that main general perception, the main general vibe, yeah, and they can smell from a mile away if you're a fraud or if you're someone who's not doing it with pure intentions or if you're actually an energy vampire who's disguising as an energy killer. <laughs> that happens too. But yeah, it's very important to just make sure that you are connecting or at least it's important to me to make sure that you're connecting in an authentic way and it's not just like entertainment. No, I think that's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful mm-hmm. intention to set and I'm sure in your space do you no i don't even really want to go there and ask that well i was gonna say do people like accuse you of being an energy vampire or is that like uh i've had yeah yeah. i've definitely had and it makes sense because those are also the people who just saw me for two seconds and then didn't see the consent video but i can't necessarily Mm. control that on tiktok i mean there are ways where you're like okay consent to receive but i've already told you some of the problems that we'll have with the algorithm if you do things like that you just won't show up and it's not just like oh well you don't con you don't care about people consenting just so you can get the views. I'm like, no, there is a layer here that you're you're missing. I'm trying to get to a lot of people who otherwise would not have known about this. And it doesn't even affect you negatively if you do watch it and you and you don't consent. If you don't like it, it didn't affect you. It just rubbed you the wrong way. I didn't actually do anything to your energy if you are having an issue with this because your higher self would not have allowed it to happen to begin with. And if you feel a little like, ooh, like scared, like, you know, how you when you look at the little spice jars and you feel, I mean, it wasn't the jar's fault. You know, it was whatever you have kind of going on that's resisting that or has a connotation to that. So I've definitely been accused of being like an energy vampire, but the last thing I want to do is absorb anybody's energy. So (laughs) they can say it all day long, but I have my protections. I'm protecting everyone who's watching it as well. And we're grounding that energy. So there's no stealing. There's no stealing energy here. It's kind of also, I'm getting this like kind of visual as you're saying this, where I've like in my like channeling work, I've kind of like received um, messages that I haven't agreed with. And there's a piece of me that kind of goes like, uh, is that really true? And then, you know, there is that, I guess this goes back to discernment. There's that piece of Mm -hmm. like saying like, no, like that's actually not true. And it's that act of, let's say source or spirit putting that out there so that I can still embody that basic, let's say not a basic level, but like a higher level training or lesson of, of training that discernment. Right. So it's Mm -hmm. almost like even those people who are coming in saying like, Oh my gosh, you're being an energy vampire. That's its own lesson in a way for them as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I kind of want to like use it in an example of like tarot readings and stuff because a lot of the times like if you are receiving a message and you don't feel like it's for you and you're just like maybe it's a little bit less energy vampire but it's still in the energy healing and reading and metaphysical space where someone can have a reading from a tarot person and not feel like it like resonates with them if it's like a generalized reading like pick a part pick a card or pick a pile on youtube But it's like that part's just not for you. And if you really feel like whatever they're saying is going to happen to you and it's like super set in stone, you don't have the discernment for yourself and you need to be able to say, okay, well, I didn't really quite resonate with this, but it probably just wasn't for me. Or maybe I didn't understand it um, in a way that they were actually trying to make me understand it or maybe it just hasn't happened yet and I haven't experienced it yet because I can say no all I want and then a couple weeks and it happens I'm like oh wow I was actually warned about this in my tarot or oracle reading so I would also want to say in addition to that if you are in and this is why it's so important that energy healers are real and authentic because if somebody is in a vulnerable state they will believe anything They will believe anything. Mm. And it's just really important that as an energy healer or a reader that you know that they will believe anything. And so you, at least I do my best to say, hey, this is confirmation reading or this is just what I'm sensing. But if you don't, don't feel like what I said or what I received is exactly like ringing true for you, 
let that part go. It probably didn't hit. It was something else, you know, for another time or whatever it is. Or maybe it was maybe my own bias because it's not that as an energy healer, we have zero biases. We do have a little bit of a bias. It's still up to us to clear our own traumas so that we have less of them and have more of a neutral way of healing and a neutral way of reading as well. And even taking this conversation and almost shifting it to a more high level example, thinking, Mm -hmm. or even a high level perspective, excuse me, with regards to, especially the pick of cards. And I'm sure you can see this as well with your content is Mm -hmm. you're putting information out there for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, maybe millions of people in some situations to think that every single word of that message is going to resonate with every single person Mm -hmm. is a little bit where not that it even resonates, but it's for every single person is a little bit of a, Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm going to say this politely, a little bit of a, uh, I'm feeling like cynical, but cynical doesn't feel like the right word. A uh, naive, naive is the right word. It's a little bit naive mm-hmm. to believe that someone putting content out on YouTube or on TikTok, uh, especially like uh, pick a card is like, like the big one, because I know I've watched mm-hmm. a good fair share of those, which mm-hmm. blew me away in certain situations. For sure. You pick one, right? And then, and so for those who don't know, <laughs> maybe I need to take a step backwards here. They'll usually like throw like three or four decks like on the screen and it'll be like pick, you know, one, two, three or four. And then it's like you're reading based on whatever the theme of the video is, whether it's significant other, what to expect in 2023. And so you, so then they kind of go through each cards that were in this deck that you selected and say, oh, okay, like, you know, it's going to be a fiery person and they're going to appear in the, in the gym or something, or they're going to have black hair or blonde hair and they're going to be looking like this. And it's funny because this, this video gets like a million views and it's like to think that that exact situation is going to happen for that many people is a little bit naive. And so I mm-hmm. think this is a beautiful example of like coming back to that discernment of like, okay, maybe 80% of this information is for me, but then the other 20%, I just need to kind of let go. And that's for somebody else. And maybe there's 20% inside my 80% that's for someone else, or that's not going to resonate with someone else and it's for them. And so it's, mm-hmm. that's kind of how I've even looked at it from a, let's say a scientific mindset in regards to mm-hmm. this whole pick a card and and uh information dilemma that occurs. Yeah. So I think that you know there's certain people in that tarot space that I like absolutely love because they're very diligent about saying, "Hey, this is general, just so you know." And sometimes, not all the time, but I notice that the tarot readers who are more, even more broad and even more general and really don't offer anything specific, almost like when you look at the angel numbers and they just keep telling you the same things where it's like every single video you hop on, it's almost telling you the same things. And maybe it's only like just positive every single time. It's like you have to be able to have that balance, or at least I personally try to have that balance. But another part of it is like they will get the most views because it's so general. And it's like, I feel like people who are in that tarot space on YouTube who are really getting into like the nitty gritty of the reading, even it being general, have like smaller views, but it really, really hits Mm. to those people. So it's kind of funny how just the internet works in ways like that. And I always think it's very important that if you do get like a general reading, if you really resonate with that certain tarot reader or oracle reader or psychic in general get a one-on-one reading for sure because like if they could be at least 80 percent specific with what you're going you know with what you have going on then see how specific they can get with that one-on-one because it's super insightful and the amount of like information they'll be able to give you or remind you of is just crazy the next level Mm -hmm. and i'm uh i'm also currently thinking about uh what was it it's gonna be a little bit of a topic switch Oh, you were talking about how your meta goal, speaking of like meta analysis, is mm-hmm. to heal one person at a time. And so yeah. I was kind of curious and even tying this back into, well, no, I'm not going to preframe it. That's your meta goal, which is to heal one person at a time. Do you have sub goals underneath that? Do you have, I, I don't, and I don't want to frame this the wrong way, so or not the wrong mm-hmm. way, but I don't want to frame it in a way. So are there other goals that you have underneath this meta goal of healing one person at a time? 
Yeah, I guess like when you're like putting it that way, it's like that is definitely like the big, that's my big umbrella, healing the world one soul at a time, even though technically I'm healing it like with multiple souls at a time. <laughs> the irony. But yeah. yeah, the irony of it all. I think at first, when I was first doing it, it was definitely like one soul at a time. Like I'm just going to, and then it became something else where it wasn't, but I still loved it because it was just like, well, if we live in 40, everything's one time anyway. So, um, but the subcategories, um, I think it just breaks down to like the services I would probably provide. So if it's like a tarot service, like I just want to be able to give them the information that they can receive the best. And again, that's like another thing where with my throat chakra and the communication skills, I've always been able to understand how someone else is perceiving information like right off the bat. Mm. So I'll know how to talk to you and what style and what personality I need to be in that moment to be able to get you to actually understand and then take some action because there's nothing more that I dislike than giving a reading to someone and then like knowing that they're not going to take action or like checking up on them, following up and like they didn't do anything. And it's like, not that you have to do what I say, but like if you are coming to me with an issue that you have and we're giving you the clarity if you're not putting in the work, you're going to have to come back for the same kind of reading in a month's time or so. So when it comes to reading, I just want to be able to provide them the most accurate information that I can, but also giving them like advice to help support them outside of the reading, which is super important. Not many people do. Um, when it comes to maybe like the Reiki training, it's just honestly support, 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 because there's so much knowledge that goes in there. And of course, with spirituality being such like a broad thing, and there's so much of like the modern and the new age, like I want to be able to like have myself be a support beam for them whenever they're out venturing in the world, going off on their own. And they're like, wait, hold on. Is this, you know, let me check in with someone who I know, like, and respect and who has been in this field for maybe longer. Mm -hmm. So if it's not clarity it's support if it's not support it's just healing to the best of my ability where i can get done as much as i can possibly do in one session because that's another thing like i would love for people to be able to receive reiki or healing sessions in a consistent basis but people are so into the quick fixes and the instant gratification and like oh this made me feel better and it makes them feel better for maybe you know hopefully a month or more but then it's like if they're not keeping up with it like your life could be so much better if you kept <laughs> up with it so what i just try to do is heal them as much as i can because i know that there is a there is a good chance that they're only going to come maybe that one time when they're really feeling like they need it and they're desperate for it. I'm like, okay, well, if you're desperate for it, let's get it all as much as we can and and see how you do. And if I see you again, that's great. Wow. So my main takeaway in that answer was how outward focused your goals are on like other people. And I think, yeah, I think that's definitely something I need to integrate a little bit more because I was, I, I was, uh, what was it? Oh, like January, uh, December 31st, January 1st ish. I was trying to like look at my goals and I realized that they were all very like numerically based, like mm -hmm. X followers, X downloads, you know, Y dollars in the bank account. And like something about it to me was like, this doesn't feel like right. You know, like there should be something that's a little bit more spiritually based or helping based. And so I, mm -hmm. I actually really like your answer of how it's, it seems like it's a, a lot more outwardly focused as opposed to internal personal metrics. Mm -hmm. Well, because those metrics are all side effects. Mm. So it's going to happen. The amount of money they make, it's going to happen. It's a side effect. It's a side effect of what? And then that of what should be what your goal is. Because if you can just focus on that, it's much easier for me to say, I can help someone relax and assist in their healing process. That's easier for me to say than for me to say, I can make $100,000 a month. Like mm. there is a certain belief that I have about what my capabilities are and what I'm able to do with the skill set and the knowledge that I have than to hit a certain metric that is kind of like invisible and up in the air. Like being able to help someone, that's tangible for me. Being able to hit a certain number on a social media platform, not very tangible at all. Right. At least that's how I look at it. But maybe that's also like a bit of like a different stance. I'm not sure if like the whole um, masculine side and feminine side plays any sort of effect in this because just logic or 
with the masculine side, like the logic really is a main strong point. And then with like the feminine side, we're going to have a little bit more of like the emotional or like um, empath kind of energy. So I'm wondering if that also has like an influence on how you were thinking about numbers, numbers, numbers. And now you're starting to understand, wait, we need both aspects, right? We need both. And just same thing. I can't just want to help heal people and be an empath for them. And then what not charge? And then not, you know, expect myself to have certain goals. Like you're always going to need both. Sure. No, that's a beautiful like correlation there as well with like the feminine versus masculine aspect of it. I think my mind was probably, and maybe, and maybe it's, maybe you're hitting something there that it is integrated a little bit masculine, feminine. Whenever I was being conscious of it, it was more like, okay, these are like great. But even as we discussed earlier with like the whole fame thing, it's like, more numbers isn't going to like make me feel more fulfilled. And so then Mm -hmm. my mind was trying to figure out how can I make it masculine? How can I make the fulfillment masculine? So like, it was like, what, what (laughs) I was like, trying to think like, what numbers can I track to feel more fulfilled? And it was like, this doesn't, this doesn't like compute, (laughs) you know, it was like, Mm -hmm. okay, something's off here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to kind of like work at it in a different way and get that different angle it's honestly like that's a version of the hot and cold Mm -hmm. where you're trying to hit it one way hit it one way and it's just not computing it's not registering it's not and so then you just pivot try a different way and see how much warmer you got or how much colder you got and then keep pivoting until you find that point where you're like no this is what feels the best and so if you haven't found it yet i really i hope that you do pray that you do (laughs) well i think in your in your response i kind of am finding it i think that it is that you know, learn to articulate better, right? Become a better articulator for my podcast, uh, become a better, I, I want to get into meditating more and like guiding people through meditation. So I think mm-hmm. just being exposed to learning how to guide people through meditation better, but see that that's where it becomes difficult for me is like, those are the outward focused things that helps other people. If I'm able to articulate mm-hmm. better, it helps other people. If I'm able to guide people better in meditations, it helps them better, but I, it, it still becomes that like, tracking aspect like is it it, maybe it's just something that i can oh it just comes back to feeling i think it's something i just have to like Mm -hmm. re-listen to a podcast and be like oh i can feel that i'm definitely articulating things better now versus podcast number one which i certainly certainly know that that's the case (laughs) right and then yeah tracking you could track it but it would have to take that um bird's eye view like we were talking about earlier taking a step back and like the zooming out where you can finally track it but even maybe getting like more specific like what is um articulating better mean for you like articulating better is still like broad which you've probably already like figured it out but if not then that's also another thing to maybe consider like what does articulating better mean for me specifically? Maybe it's literally mm. being um, more educated in some sort of, you know, field, or maybe it's having this sort of skill of being able to like link one thing to another or like pop a joke in somewhere or whatever it is. But when you can like be more specific, then you're going to feel like, okay, I actually hit it. Like, this is what I said I was going to do. So when you do listen back, you're like, oh, I hit it. And I hit that joke. And I did that one thing I said I was going to do. And oh, yeah, I was super like enunciating my words. And, you know, that allows you to feel like, okay, this is tangible. I said I was going to do this. And then I actually did it, not just had it be like, okay, I want to do this. Because then it that's a feeling thing. You can't really put that into logic. If you're feeling like you want to have more fulfillment in some way, you're going to have to tap into that internal navigation internal navigational system and be able to see where it's trying to steer you gotcha yeah and i think if we're going to keep expanding on this example yeah i i've I've definitely seen it where especially like earlier in the podcast like and i don't know if it was my perception but spirituality had this like heaviness to it of okay like you know you need to do well because then there's going to be karma and if you don't and if you don't do well with karma then it's going to come back to you and so like you need to be able to but now i'm kind of shifting more into that joy and entertainment side of things where i do want to enter put that energy more into the podcast of it being entertaining of it being more joyful of it being more informative for people where it's like oh okay spirituality is like kind of cool it's not this like heavy thing where i'm going to hell if i don't do xyz Mm -hmm, absolutely i don't know why but for some reason that kind of reminded me just kind of going to what you were saying i was translating and processing it as 
obviously energy is everything, which we already know. But like it reminds me of like when someone's going to a casino and they're playing blackjack, if they're only going there to say, I need to make this amount of money or I need to win this amount of times or this amount of hands or whatever it is, they're going in there. And a lot of the times like they won't do well. But Mm. when they go there and they're trying to have fun and they're making conversation with the people who are also around them, knowing that all of them have the same job to just bet against the dealer, like not even like it's not even that they're competing against themselves. It's all a team effort when they're having a lot more fun and more joyous, that energy gets brought across the whole table. And now all the people sitting down are winning against the dealer. And so it's just kind of interesting how that works once you maybe let maybe it's letting go of the outcome i don't know what you would call it but it's definitely just focusing on the overall energy that's being inputted into there and seeing then what metric comes out of there or what outcome comes out of there Mm. yeah i think something vibes with that it also seems like it ties back into us ties back in a little bit to like i think like the energy work on the the brand let's say in general like the podcast in general so that it attracts Mm -hmm. more people honestly like yourself or like other people who bring in that more joyous kind of vibe to the spirituality space so that it's not like okay this is what you need to do that your thoughts if you have one bad thought like all hell's gonna break loose yeah yeah yeah. right like hard on information 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 (laughs) yeah i mean you need again it's always a balance you always need a little bit of both but if you you know want that I always say it's like you want the light to shine. Mm. And so I'm always thinking of like in my business, I want my light to shine brighter because that's how I'm going to get the majority of people. So what can I do to make my, you know, light shine brighter? And honestly, at the end of the day, sometimes it's like, well, I just need to like get a car wash or I need to like, and it's sometimes so like minute that you wouldn't even like compare it or correlate it to work at all. But if that's done, I feel more at peace. If I'm more at peace, I'm going to start to resonate with more peaceful people. More peaceful people are going to find me. So sometimes it trickles down like that and your internal navigational system will, will put you there. Um, but yeah, sometimes if work is feeling a bit mundane or work is feeling like, oh my God, I need to make this happen and this happen or, oh, I did this. It's going to affect my karma this way. Like now you're just like focusing on something that's so busy and not even truth. Right? right. And it's just like navigating what truth actually is and what the illusion is instead. And I love how you brought in the aspect of like just doing this little thing, because that's something mm-hmm. that I've seen so many times, time and time again. And even, you know, people that are spiritually attuned always talk about this where, you know, maybe you're not making the amount of money you want to make. And it's like, okay, well, you get this like download that it's like, go clean your room. And you're like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. But after I make this money and it's like, no, Mm -hmm. go clean your room now. And then you clean your room and then you get like a check for a thousand dollars or something. Yeah. And it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And that's in, in, in theory, removing a blockage, Mm. you know what I mean? And I mean, sometimes I kind of compare it to like feng shui, which I don't know too much about, but there's definitely certain areas of your house that when you map it out and put like the feng shui chart on it, you'll see like this area of your house is for money. This area of your house is for family. This area of your house is for love. And then you put that map on top of your house and you're like, oh my gosh, I always have like a dirty laundry room. Like, where is that? And then you see that you're having blockages in the laundry room and you're having blockages in your life Mm. and so energy works in very many different ways but when you have some sort of pile up of energy anywhere in any area of your life you want to see how you can clear it up because you're sitting here trying to work on so many different ways to clear it out but you have a limited way of understanding what could be the issue and you're not taking a look at, oh, wow, this one thing that is an inconvenience for me to do, but super simple. Once I do it, energy is clear. So it's very interesting. I know that like one of the things is like kitchen. So people who don't like doing the dishes or cleaning up their kitchen or leaving things on the stove or even in the oven, money blocks. Mm. Money blocks for sure. Interesting, really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was going to say, because I don't, I don't like doing dishes. I guess I could, I could I know, always make more Sometimes money. I have issue with yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, whatever. Like, just let it pile up. And some people, it drives them crazy. Like, they like always have to do it. And I feel like, I mean, it's not necessarily always true, but maybe it's just like what I see. And maybe this is like my own projections. But when people are like wealthy, they always have like this cleaner lifestyle, at least from what I can see or what's being pushed out um, on the media. But it's always like they have this clean lifestyle. And maybe it's because they can afford like somebody to clean their stuff. But even then, they can afford somebody to clean their stuff. and They don't have to do it. And it's not blocked. So it's just interesting how little things like that works, because whether you realize it or not, 
since everything is a reflection of you, so many things could be in the subconscious or the unconscious. And so once you pay attention to all those things that you're ignoring, just see how much more you can like breathe energetically. Interesting. Makes a difference. Yeah. I'm going to have to look into that more because even as you're kind of talking about like this cleanness, I, I like my first thought whenever I think of like a very wealthy house is very like very white, very polished, very just like almost minimalist. And it's like a little bit more mm-hmm. like everything has its like spot. There's not like clothes laying around on the couch or on this or on that. So that's a very, it's a very interesting uh, correlation that you've, you've discovered. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And even too, like with your assets or. Oh, wait, hold on. I think your thing stopped recording. All right, we're back. What were you we, sorry about yes. that? What were you we saying? So um, sometimes when it comes to like assets or things that you own um, and kind of going back to how you're taking care of the things, everything in life really comes down to how you're doing it, not necessarily what you're doing, but how you're doing it. And so if you have things in your life where like, let's say you really wanted to get this car for a time in your life, this car was all that you ever wanted. You saved up so much money, you worked so hard and you got it. And then you're not really getting the oil changes for it. Or you're like throwing garbage in it and you're not taking it out or you're letting people eat in it. And then there's all these crumbs. It's like you had something that you really wanted and now you're not even keeping up with it and you're not maintaining it. What does that mean for other areas of your life? And that could also be relationships. Oh, I was chasing this one girl. I was chasing this one guy and I wanted them so bad. And now that I have them, I'm not listening to them. I'm not taking them on dates. I'm not, you know, seeing and checking in with like their emotional or mental state. And then what happens? You end up losing them. And then they're like, I could not understand what was going wrong. It's like you kind of have to look at how you're doing things and how you're treating other areas of your life because that's just an example. So when people, maybe if they're listening to this podcast and they're like, is really cleaning the dishes going to make me a millionaire? Maybe, maybe not. But it's about how you're going about the things that you do have currently and living in that in that way where you're constantly up leveling how you're taking care of the things around you, how you're taking care of your body, that is going to exude and change the vibration and the frequency like a crystal would into the other areas of your life. I love it. And I'm getting mystique. I feel like I could talk to you forever, but I'm getting like this little poke in the back of my head. And then I think with the, the technology kind of failing right there, it's telling me that we got to, we got to, yeah, I know it's, that's it's a cool crazy thing. We'll get into it on the next podcast. I swear. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I appreciate this conversation. I'm going to give yeah. you some space to plug your stuff to the. Audience. It's always fun to see how this plays out. Right. All right, Deke, you're sweet. you're up. Okay, sweet. So. Yes, if anyone wants to get anything in terms of Reiki training, I do that. It's self-paced, it's online, and you have access to it for life. So even if I switch platforms or even if I'm no longer teaching it for whatever reason, you're always going to have all that content available. You can go and get that Reiki training at mystiqueawakening.com and then click Reiki training. There are two different kinds. The first one is going to be the standard course where you get all the course content. And then the second one is going to be the course content plus personal one-on-one live coachings with me and meetings with me. So pick whichever one you feel that you resonate with the most. And other than that, I would have my one-on-one services in general that are just the a la carte ones. So I have my Reiki chakra balancing sessions that are about an hour long and literally last so long in the body, which is awesome because the holy fire Reiki that I'm attuned to lasts in your body for about 10 days. So even if you just get one session, you're going to be healing for the next 10 days after. Uh, I also have the spiritual guidance tarot sessions. So again, we workshop one-on-one for about an hour or so, and then we work on whatever it is that you need work on. So if you're coming in for money issues, if you're coming for emotional issues, mental issues, if you just want predictions, we can do that as well. And we're going to just have a really lovely time workshopping what we heard inside of the reading what your higher self had to say, what the universe has to say. And then we're going to workshop it into how you can manifest a different lifestyle for yourself or a different outcome. So whatever issue you come in with, hopefully you come out of it with a nice game plan of how to energetically align to what it is that your desired outcome is and the physical action you can take to get there so that you feel that you're moving forward. And both of those services can be found on mistakeawakening.com and then click services. And anything else that I have to say for you guys would just be... Um, let's see, taking a deep breath, 
relax yourself whenever you can, ground every single day if you can, and just take it day by day. Don't get too stressed. Be a little bit more lighthearted. Don't take things so seriously or so personally. You're doing just fine. That's all I got. I love it. I love it. Thank Mystique, you. you killed it. Especially, I don't know if we mentioned it, but especially for your first podcast ever. Crushed first it. podcast ever. Excited yeah. about it. Amazing. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate everything. All your questions were super spot on. I, again, I also feel like we could talk for hours, which we'll save it for a later podcast, a little part we'll two. Save it for Mystique part two. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you so much, though. Mystique, thank you. Uh, Conscious Minds, go check out her stuff. It's super dope. Even if you don't you know, pay for the stuff, at least go check her out on Twitter or Twitter. I don't know. She might be on Twitter, but TikTok. <laughs> no. so, yeah, I've got TikTok. I've got YouTube and I've got Instagram if you guys are interested. There it is. There it is. And uh, with that being said, I will see you guys in the sixth dimension. Bye.